All right. I guess we are live. So today we are going to be talking about the issue issue of internet church versus physical church. Okay. Um, and then when I say church, of course, we need to define it. You know, it's the body of Christ. But what we're saying here is fellowshipping online versus fellowshipping in person would be another way to say that. Um, and this thing has come up with me because I've been a big proponent of the house church movement for a long time. And, um, you know, and, and I've heard a lot of the attacks and things. Um, I was raised going to church, you know, physical, you know, church building thing. And I've heard a lot of the arguments back and forth and whatever else. So uh, we're going to go over some of that stuff today and um, look up some scriptures and things too. Um, so I don't, I don't know what all we'll get into, but um, we're going to have a discussion on this thing. Can you, can you, is it, you know, okay to fellowship online with people or do you have to meet with people in person is basically what we're going to look at. Um, now I would say to start out this thing, let me just, I mean, I got to get to my thing here. I'm trying to open up a window over here. Uh, of course, I think everybody that's tuning in knows what the church is. The church is not a physical building. The church is, you know, if you're saved, you're in the church. Okay. And the problem that I see with people that go to church buildings is, especially when they go through Bible college education and the whole thing, you get this thing of, um, you know, you, you, church has to be kind of your, your life after you're going, you're going through Bible college has to be, um, you have to make it pay kind of a thing. And so you'll learn to charge a tithe at a church building and you'll learn to have a church building. And a lot of these guys come out and they know, you know, the Bible doesn't teach church buildings. The Bible doesn't teach the 10% tithe, but they have to stick with certain things in order to make that living. And so they'll, they'll kind of cover up some things and whatever. Well, we know the Bible doesn't specifically say this, but we do it anyhow. And, you don't qualify to be a Bible believer at that point in time, whether somebody's saved or not at that time or, or, or whatever. I'm not going to say anything on that, but you know, to be, to be called a Bible believing Christian, your practices have to be founded upon scripture. And problem number one, I see with this whole thing of you have to have a local fellowship and whatever else is, you know, they'll, they'll say, you know, that you're in church in the sense of you're saved. So you're part of the body of Christ. But if you're not part of a local fellowship, then you're not technically in church. And I take issue with that because there's a lot of people that cannot go and meet with people in person. Okay. Um, many, many years ago, I mean, way back, I think it was even before I was on YouTube. Um, we had our, our house church. No, it would have been, I guess, right around the time I was on early on with the whole thing of YouTube. And we actually got a guy from North Korea contacted us. Hmm. And he said, you know, I, I, I guess he was some kind of computer hacking guy and he was able to see some of our videos, ended up getting saved. And he said, there's no way that I can be in contact with you. I just wanted to let you know that I saw your videos and, it, and, and I got saved. And now, now, you know, how do you handle that if you're a church building person? or local fellowship. You have to have this local fellowship thing. A guy in North Korea got saved, but there's no way he can meet with anybody. You see, I mean, that's a problem. And, it, and, it, and of course you can say, well, you're taking that extreme thing to justify yourself, not wanting to go and be with people. Uh, no, there's, I mean, I'm not against people meeting together to have fellowship. That's fine. Um, but we'll talk more about that too, because there's an issue I want, want to bring up with that. But what I'm against is when you say these people that meet together, they have people that are in their local area and they can meet together. And yet they'll condemn those of us who don't have people that we can meet with. And then, and then they'll try to say that, you know, somehow uh, the internet is not legitimate worship or whatever else. Um, you're not legitimately fellowshipping with people because you're not able to touch them physically or something like this. And they'll cite, you know, well, they didn't do that in the New Testament or something. Well, I'm all for, you know, primitive Christianity in the sense of what were they doing in the Bible. But we're not living in the same world. 
Okay. Um, that's just the way it is. And, and we can talk with people online. I mean, right now there's people tuning in from all over the country. How would that have happened in the first century? Well, it didn't. Um, and, and, you know, it's not some kind of a fake thing or whatever else on the Internet. I mean, you're talking to people. And there's a lot of the brethren. I mean, a lot of you guys, you're you're talking back and forth with each other. It's, you know, you, you, you're you making friendships. You're getting to know people. I mean, I've seen many times people will actually meet each other in the comments of my videos and they'll, and they'll actually meet together in person. So, you know, I don't know. I just, you guys want to say some things, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the first thing I want to start out by saying is that that's, that's exactly correct. And it's funny too, because a lot of people, you know, you will hear that thing that, you know, you can't have as strong of a fellowship in online than you can in person. And to be honest, I take a huge issue with that because I mean, um, just using myself and a few of the brethren I fellowship with online, for example, we, you know, in our personal fellowship that we do online together and, and everything, you know, a few of the brethren and JT being included in that, uh, me and JT, um, we run a very, very tight ship. We all believe the same things. And when there's an issue, we actually talk to each other about it. We actually sit down and go over the scriptures and the bond that we all have through believing the same doctrines through this type of fellowship is so from what, from my experience is so much stronger than anything I've ever seen in any kind of church building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I understand there's local fellowships that want to be of one mind on things, but even in a local fellowship, you run there, there, there possibly is one person in there that isn't actually believing the same way as you. And people are getting caught up in this awkward situation of, uh, well, should I say something to that guy? Maybe I won't make, you know, cause it, it is a very, it can get nerve wracking having to confront someone on a heresy sometimes. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily something we all want to do, but there's that thing where locally they may not even do that. And then all of a sudden you think you have this strong fellowship and somebody in there is completely off in so many areas and mm -hmm. nobody's saying a word about it because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to disrupt the fellowship or cause a church split, whether it's in a building or out of a building, you know, cause there's house, you know, the house church is obviously the, the most biblical you can get is in a house church. It's not in a church building. You get away from those places if you're in those places. But mm -hmm. the idea being is that you can have a bond just as strong as a local fellowship in person online with brethren that are one mind as you. It's as simple as that. And for anyone to come against that and say, no, that's wrong, you've got a problem. Because, I mean, Paul had a very strong bond with all the churches that he wrote letters to. And he wasn't even there physically. And everything in mm -hmm. this modern day thing of us writing to each other back and forth online this is a form of a letter so yeah yeah, yeah. and it, you know i just got to interject something um and that is that there's a reason that they're having to do background checks now for church buildings yeah <laughs> some guy's going to teach sunday school or whatever else and oh you know he's a child molester oh i guess you know whatever and you know i mean jeff dahmer when he was you know doing all the weird stuff he was doing he was going to church Mm -hmm. Okay. Before he got, you know, I believe he got saved when he got into prison and you know truly repented and came to the Lord as a broken sinner. But back when he was a cannibal and a sodomite and everything else, doing all the horrible stuff, he was going to churches. Mm -hmm. You know, so and he wasn't caught, so there was no criminal record or anything. But I mean, there's been many, many cases. I mean, throughout my life, you know, born and raised and going to different churches throughout the years. And there's some guy and he's great. Everybody loves him and everything else. And all of a sudden he's run off with some other woman or sodomite or whatever else, you know, and, and you get into the politics of the, of the, the biggest tithers in the church fellowship, you know, it's kind of hands off for those people. And mm -hmm. I mean, there was the church I grew up in, there was a the youth group and there was actually a, I got to just, I mean, it's graphic here, sorry, but it was a sodomite orgy with some of the, the, the boys in the youth group. And but it was it was some of the key families in the church, so it got totally buried and it got covered up. And that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's physical. We're we're there, we're dealing with people in the physical. You need to have that physical, you know, fellowship there. Yeah, how did it go? Mm -hmm. It just happens all the time. Yep. And on that same note, to add to what you just said, and that's another big thing that you hear you know the people who push that will will start saying well you need to be around local brethren to keep you accountable or even uh, the the worst wording I, I have ever heard is be under authority i mean mm -hmm. yeah, we're accountable to each other but be under authority that 
get away from that wording because that sounds almost Catholic. Like you have to be an authority to the pastor. That's not, that's not true. And mm-hmm. the thing is, is the, this whole thing, accountable authority, authority, look, it's good to have your brethren to hold you accountable and to, and to be able to edify each other. And when someone, when a brother is having an issue to go to him and correct him and he gets corrected. But at the end of the day, first Corinthians nine twenty seven, but I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. You got to keep under your own body. You can't be re- relying on other brethren to keep you accountable. You have to keep yourself mm-hmm. accountable first. And then if you get yourself out of hand for whatever reason, which if you are if you love the Lord like you do, you shouldn't be letting that happen, then the brother will have to come and correct you. I mean, you know, I love the idea of accountability between the brethren. That's always there. But at the end of the day, your relationship is between you and the Lord. You have to keep yourself accountable to God first. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, go ahead, Brian. No, go, no, go ahead, brother. That's fine. No, I'm like, as Tim, to your point, that's, I mean, I'm exactly there. I mean, again, and that's the thing. To clarify, you know, no one's saying that we that that we're a bunch of hermits that say we want to be on our own. And we're not saying that. And because me and Tim, we've had this talk and we've talked with other Brent about this. We would love to come out and just be with everybody. You know, we want we want to do that. Because I know for me, just for me personally, I only I can only think of two people that I know that are strong doctrinally that I'm completely safe, totally safe, or strong doctrinally. That within they're in a two hour range, and even then, I that means I still have the two hours there, and then two hours back. You know, you know, that's the thing there. And but and, and the thing is, like you said, Tim, about the whole thing of uh, being accountable. At the end of the day, yes, there is some there is some of that. You know, with the brethren, we to keep to keep each other in check. But you're still accountable to God. In first in what in um, in first Corinthians eleven. Uh, you know, verses verse thirty one for structure righteousness. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. We yep. need to be the ones to self, you know, judge ourselves and look and say, "Hey, are we doing these right?" You know, I don't need, believe me. I believe me. I don't. I don't need a brother to sit there and you know, or a sister to sit there and tell me, you know, you're in sin. You already know, you know, and you know, and and that's the thing too. Again, Ian, because again, like I said, we, you know, I would love to physically be with you all right now. That'd be amazing, you know. But in the reality of the situation is though, um, being you know, isolated where I am, the Lord has blessed me tremendously and i know he has for you too as well just all the things because again it's a personal relationship it's personal he you know he will specifically show you things you know then say again yeah i i don't want to confuse people i mean obviously he'll show you a lot of great things when when you're in a a local body but when you're on your own again well just what i'm doing right now last time i last time i was doing a stream with you brian we were discussing the thing on on the godhead and obviously the lord didn't show me every little thing of it i've learned from other brethren the point is there's a lot of things he has shown me I've been tremendously blessed blessed with because I haven't been, you know, out affiliated with all these, you know, people that you know so I you know so I can compromise. I hope I hope you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and again, you know, there's there is a danger in meeting together with a lot of people. You see it in Corinthians. You mm-hmm. know, uh, there's you know, all saved people have flesh. You all, we all struggle with issues of our flesh and the more flesh you get together, the more trouble there's going to be. I don't care how, how good and sanctified and whatever else I've been in. I mean, I went to see Peter Ruckman, which I of course think very highly. There was a whole bunch of stuff he was wrong in, but I think very highly of the man and that the, uh, and it was one of his graduates churches and we went there and there were so many problems in that place. I mean, it was just rot and filthy. I wouldn't step foot in that place again, you know? I mean, and that was one of the best examples of local fellowships or whatever else. You, you just you get people together, even when they're all saved, let's say, which, you know, how that worked. But because, um, you know, there's always going to be fake people going to these church buildings, but yeah. whatever. But even if they're all saved, you're still going to have issues there. You're still going to have whatever. And what happens a lot of times with these churches, these fellowships, they get together and it gets really, really lukewarm, and it just kind of let, let's just not let's not bring that up right now. We'll talk about that some other time. And they get really lukewarm, and it just, you know. But I, I just want to say a couple of things here. Um, the uh, the whole point of when you go through the Book of Acts, you know, again, you have to you have to remember things in context. Okay, Acts chapter two. The day of Pentecost, there's 3,000 people saved. 
Now, obviously, you don't just say, okay, everybody, praise the Lord, you're saved. Go on home, read your Bible, pray, witness when you can. There needs to be some, some government, quote unquote government. You need to appoint elders and deacons and whatever else. That stuff is there. But if you have a small group, you don't need multiple elders and deacons and all kinds of other stuff. It's just, it's not there. And to try to teach this, this thing of there has to be that ordained elder that's sent out by the mother church. And each, if you're, if you're saved, you have to be under that headship or something. It's not what the Bible teaches. It's just not there. You know, Christ is the head of the church. And if you get big enough, if you get a day of Pentecost type of a thing, well, sure, elders, deacons, bring them in there because they need to control that, that situation. But you get saved and you meet with a few other people or whatever else, you don't have to have that whole structure like that. And again, that's where a lot of these guys get messed up. And they'll do this whole thing, which just irritates me like crazy. If, if you don't have a good, you know, government church government system over you or in your area and you need to move to find one. Mm -hmm. well, that, is, that is so stupid. I mean, okay. So there's, there's very few Bible believers up here. I mean, we've met a few, but there's not that many, but you know, I guess I need to head to some Christian Mecca someplace, Bible believing Mecca where I can meet with people of like mind and just let people up here go to hell. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, and you don't even see that in the New Testament. I mean, they did go to Antioch and things. Sure, I get that. But Paul's going places where, you know, the gospel is not even been preached yet. Mm -hmm. You know, the Romans chapter 15, verse 20 talks about, you know, you don't build upon another man's foundation. You know, the Lord wants us spread out. The body of Christ is supposed to be flexible. We're not supposed to have holy cities and holy temples and whatever else. And um, so it just... Well, brother, to that point, I'll just throw this in here. Um, in Ephesians 4.11, uh, uh, it says here, I'm going to give you some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, and the thing is, and that's the thing. Everyone's ministry is going to be different. If God has called you, say, to be an evangelist, for example, you can't be. I mean, you're always on the move, kind of, essentially. You're not you're not always in a localized spot every single Sunday. You know, you're always on the move, and that and 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 you kind of just touched on it too, especially if if God has called you to be in a certain place, and you say, well, just well, just move. We all congregate in this one area, so 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 we're gonna build a, we're gonna build a little fortress kingdom over here, and let the let the, and, and and let and let and let where you were and. He was and she was all those places just get just get to go to hell now because now that one person would just say you know, that one person that one shining light quote unquote where god set you to be at is now been taken away you know all, all so you can just congregate in this one centralized idea you know or a uh, you know, place i mean and but that that that's just one of the problems i see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and, you know, un unfortunately, I mean, when you're just honest about it, a lot of these guys with, you know, Bible college educated guys, I mean, I've been confronted by them. I had a guy tell me, he said, you're in sin because you, you know, I preach. I was preaching in the pulpit of the church, the Baptist church I was going to at the time. And, um, you know, and he said, you're in sin because you haven't gone submitted to Bible college. You need to you need to go and get a Bible college education. I said, chapter and verse, please. Yeah. Well, he said when Paul was in the wilderness, he said that was his Bible college education. <laughs> Just that. Yeah, don't say that. Huh? Okay. You know, so he's out there. Well, and, and, see, and see, to that point, though, again, Paul was isolated for them, what, the, the first three years after he got saved, he went off and he learned. And then and then after that, you don't see, again, you still don't see him every single Sunday doing it. He's off doing all this. And I, I understand and people say, well, when people say, well, well Paul is an apostle. He was called to do. I know that. But for, for instruction of righteousness, that's the point, though, you know, yeah. you don't always have to, you know, you're not forced to be. Again, that, that's my people. OK, show me the scripture that says I have to be in this thing every single week, not trying to avoid it. But what does it say? And, and then which leads into the thing of uh, the which well, I, I don't know if this is one of your questions, but we'll, I guess we'll cover it now since I brought it up. The infamous Hebrews 10, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'll just, we'll, we'll read the context because they 
those some people they just don't. I mean, in Hebrews ten, um, and again the book's called Hebrews. There's a good hint for you there, but uh, uh, we'll just we'll we'll start at verse twenty two um, of Hebrews chapter ten. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast. The, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly. This verse twenty-five. Not forsaking the verse. Uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And people say, "Well, see, you need to get. You need to be. You know, you know get your butt in a good local church, and you're out of touch with the Lord." Well, first of all, again. In these guys again for instructs righteous all what each other I think for instructs righteous that's great fantastic not teaching against it but let's again remember who are we writing to the Hebrews the Jews and and, and because the the, the very next because again what's it say as you see the day approaching what day is that verse twenty six for if we for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there may have no more sacrifice for sins but a fearful fearful looking for a judgment of fire indignation which shall devour the adversaries. In context, that's the day of the Lord. The the Jews, the Hebrews, when they were being hunted down like like an animal in the time of Jacob's trouble, they they have they have to stay together. They have to be in that time. Now they will have to be like really together. You know, strength in numbers because when that isolation, if they were to get isolated, then that temptation to take the mark of the beast is stronger because that's why it says for free sin willfully and goes off from the, because because again that's someone who they lose it and they ain't getting it back. That's the mark, you know, and so contextually, that's where you, so contextually, you can't use that to say you got to get your butt in local church. This is to the Hebrews that have, or they can't be isolated because if they do, they're more than likely going to take the mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've I've had that thing used so many times on me and and whatever else. You just you need to read the context. Mm -hmm. It is not written to Christians. Mm -hmm. It yep. just simply isn't, you know. The Lord knew that the, the body of Christ was going to be persecuted. And again, you know, okay, we, we meet together in local fellowships. All right. Uh, have you studied church history? Yeah. Um, where are the church buildings? You know, yeah. Christian meeting in these church buildings didn't even show up till a few hundred years ago. You know, and it was because of the Protestant Reformation. And the Protestant Reformation was a bunch of Catholics saying we want to reform Catholicism and make our own version of Catholicism. That's all it was. It's not some kind of a, you know, and I, I'm not saying some of the things that the Protestants stood for were fine, but Bible believers existed long before the Protestant Reformation, and they were not meeting in church buildings. <laughs> they were meeting anywhere but church buildings. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and it just, you know, this, this whole mindset of the church building thing, the reason I stand so hard against it is because people worship those church buildings. It becomes this place I got saved. You know, I, I mean, there's so many songs. You know, I remember that that old bench where I prayed, and I remember that time that Sunday morning, that that Easter service, and I came down, you know, and I got I, I gave my heart to Jesus. And all that. it's all church building, church building, church building. Sunday school, I got saved as a as a you know little child in Sunday school. It's, it's not even possible. No. And you know, how you gonna understand that you're a sinner? But easy believism, you know. But all this stuff. It's and, and I got saved in church and then this become the holy place. And, you know, don't run in church, wear your Sunday best, you know, make sure you give 10 percent of your tithe to keep the Lord's church going and all this stuff. It's it, just that baggage that goes along with it. You know? And then, of course, they they get threatened by people like us that say, no, actually, the scriptures teach you don't have a place called church. And then they start to threaten us and they start to kind of put us down and oh well, you know, you're just you haven't arrived spiritually yet. You don't understand the Bible and stuff. You know, which just you know, you don't stop you, you when you're saved, you're in, in church, in the church, the body of Christ. You know, and you don't come out of that. You know, you get together with other Christians and somehow you've upped your level of Christianity or something. No, you haven't. Nice to fellowship with other brethren, but again, another another thing that you see throughout the Pauline epistles is the thing of that fellowship of the Spirit. Okay, as a Christian, when you are by yourself, you are in church all the time. All right, 
you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and you are predestinated to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and also to go to heaven when you die, eternal security of the believer. And the Lord will call you into some kind of ministry. He will give you gifts and things to use for his service. Now you take that single Christian and all of a sudden, hey, I met another Christian. There has to be fellowship of the spirit there. You know, if you start talking about things and whatever else, and they're talking about the things of the world, and, and you know, you say some controversial stuff, you know, well, the NIV is Catholic or something, and they get angry at you, there's no fellowship of the Spirit there. Uh-oh, um, I don't care what your profession is. I'm not feeling the fellowship there. You're getting, you're acting like a lost person, okay? And you'll get that. You'll get these Christians, and you start to say, you bring up something, and they'll say, well, that sounds judgmental or who are you to judge me or whatever I'm just like a lost person so you have the fellowship of the spirit that has to be there okay and then you have the approval of that person and again hey everybody's welcome in our church group here you know come on in anybody can come on in okay are you really gonna get to test that fellowship of the spirit on Sunday morning at your little church group that you go to is there is the approval process there how many times have false converts come in and they're in the ministry and all this other stuff and all of a sudden you find out some major thing, you know, and it's, it's not, you know, I mean, we have it here online. Sure. Absolutely. We've had people come into, you know, our groups as Bible believers and, and mess around and whatever else. Um, but it's not somehow what happens online because you can't get to know the person, but it doesn't happen in person. You know, when you're actually physically meeting with the people, it happens there just as much as it does online. Mm -hmm. you know? And and it, and I again I would say it's even a little bit easier to get to know what somebody's about online because you yeah. have their YouTube page, you can check out if they have Facebook or whatever else. You can kind of check up on them and say, Oh, whoa, wait a second here. You know, you're telling me all this stuff, I need to be corrected in these certain doctrines, and yet I'm looking at your channel and you're favoriting filthy videos or you know, posting horrible looking stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? But see, how do you how do you check that out when you're actually dealing with that person face to face? Exactly. They can truly lie to you and deceive you. Mm -hmm. we, you, know? you know, it's a, the two points because it's interesting because you because you've already kind of touched on it a little bit already. So many of these guys when they when they start defining the word church, you know how often they almost always define it as you know they all obviously it's almost they always define it as a building that's what the majority of people are going to tell you they, they're thinking of some building with some steeple on top and whatever else but then you get people they they'll tell you it's it's the it's the actual the actual body now you know, of believers you know the the, the the that congregation now whether it's in a, a an actual church building or a house church or what have you that then you'll get that definition but a lot of them almost always who get real caught up in this they always seem to forget too that Know that no that you are part of the church. That's the body itself. You are part of of, of that the comprises the believers. It isn't just a localized you know, location. You know what I mean? That they they and, and you see it all the time. They forget they forget passages like Ephesians chapter five, where you see that comparison going on. You know where where it's used of a husband and a wife, and then Christ and the church. You know, you know he loves the wife, but he also loves his body. You know because they're they're one and the same. You know. And some of these these guys forget that, you know, it's like, yes, again, we should have fellowship, you know, but you are still part of the body, you know, body of Christ as in Christ body, not not phys not a physical congregation, you know, and it's because I've been seeing this comment come up a few times and um, I don't know if you want to address it now, but this, I know, Tim, this is something you've brought up um it, it was matthew eighteen twenty for for where two or three are gathered together in my name there there am i in the midst of them and i would totally agree with that and uh you know tim as you, you we, we had a you know, whatever but the, the point is uh, there's people that they'll fight against that and they'll say oh, they'll, oh, that, oh that's not church and you know then it has to be then it has to be two or three people of you know different people it, it can't it can't be your family or something and and then and, and then, then then there still has to be pastors and elders there it's like that verse doesn't say that it says what it says you know <laughs> No, and on that same note, just to just to just to prove all things, um, you know, go jump up to uh, was it uh, jump up to verse? I guess jump up to verse fifteen. That's that's an okay place to start. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. 
But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee two, one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. That is a protocol for in the church. When you get someone who's in sin or in heresy, you talk to them, approach them in the spirit of meekness, admonish them twice. If they neglect to hear you, they stay prideful, then you have to kick them out. Mm -hmm. And uh, verse 18, verily, uh, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be, loosed in, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that shall ask, it shall be done of them, done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. This has this, this is completely a protocol for the church. This is about praying together and things like that and everything. It's not something you can write off and try to say that's a different dispensation. No, that's a protocol for the church. Mm -hmm. It's fairly clearly where two or three are gathered together. It's not five, six. I mean, what's the minimum number if that if that verse is not written is not for the church? Yeah. Where's the minimum number of people you have to gather with in order to be right with God? Yeah. You know, you know, and on that point, I'm I'm seeing a comment right now. Someone just commented that this this guy uh pancake batter um he said he said keyword gathered together not simply online are we not gathered right here right now see that's what i'm saying that the logic is is here is, is absurd no we right. are gathered it's just the location's different yeah we can't touch each other so that you know that's different yeah, yeah that's I'm, I'm saying it's just again hey to, Fella, I don't know who you are. I'm just saying that's that logic ridiculous. Again, he says you cannot be baptized online nor take the Lord's Supper and fellowship every every first day of the week, Sunday. Uh huh. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. Chapter and verse, man. Yeah. Yep. But but again, you know, just just reiterating this thing. This is about local fellowship. This is about a local fellowship coming together and stuff like that. And it says we're two or three. It doesn't. It doesn't give this, you know, number or the elders or the deacons everything that's supposed to be there in order for to be actually considered a church. No, it's as simple as fellowship. And mm -hmm. if someone comes along and tells you that you can't fellowship with your your safe family, you have a saved wife, and that doesn't qualify as a fellowship or a gathering, you need to tell them quite simply, chapter and verse. You need to tell them quite simply that they are wrong. They can't mm -hmm. go around saying that that somehow you. Have, having leading your family in the scriptures is not considered a fellowship or, or, you know, a local church. I mean, that is because it's two safe believers together with the Lord there in the midst of them. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I hear that thing. Well, whose authority under what, well, you know, it's it, the man is the leader of his own household and he's under the authority of God, you know, yeah. the head of the yeah. man is Christ. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you two more things here. Um, Second Timothy chapter four, verses 10 through 11 for Demas hath forsaken me. Having loved this present world and has departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. Yep. Yeah. No, oh, no, that, that can't be. And uh, who was the book of Revelation revealed to? Uh, I think that would be John. <laughs> okay. The Church of Patmos. It had to have been First Baptist Church of Patmos. Yeah, there you go. You know, the Lord reveals something to one guy on an island. Yeah, an entire book. Yeah. I mean, you look at the time of the book of Acts, Pentecost, until the time the Revelation is written, there's falling away. There's all kinds of problems. Paul's writing letters to people and saying, I wish I could be present, but I can't. I'm being absent. I'm hearing what's going on from people, and I'm having to write this to rebuke you. I can't come. You know, mm -hmm. I'm over here doing other work and things. I'm going to try to send somebody, but I don't know if I can and whatever else. I mean, what is the personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Exactly. It has to be corporate. That's Catholicism. Yep. And, just, and again, again, to your point, so to cut you off, because again, I'm reading the, the, the comments here. Again, this pancake batter, I said chapter and verse, so he gave me one. He gave me Acts 20, 20 verse 7 I'm reading here. Now, again, again, pancake batter, just re read what you're giving me. Upon the first day of the week, one of the disciples came together to break bread. Paul preached to them, comma, ready to depart on the morrow and to continue. And so... So he's going to be leaving. You know I mean, so he's there one minute and he's leaving again. You're not proving anything. Show mm -hmm. me the verse that says I have to be there every single week. Yeah. yeah. No, no one's calling you lost. We're just saying, where's the scripture that says that? As a matter of fact, Brian, you just brought up, uh, you just brought up John, you know, um, who is, you know, obviously we know the answer to this one, but who is arguably, arguably the greatest Christian that ever lived? Paul. Paul. Oh. He always gathering and always in the local fellowship and always there. 
No. He was he was alone most of the time. He was isolated in prison. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. And yet he's arguably the greatest Christian out of out of any Christian that ever lived. But he wasn't yeah. always there locally fellowshipping. He was writing letters and telling the brother he loved him through that way too. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. as that. And you know, he even talks about no man communicated with me, you know, in the book of Galatians. You know, nobody's even talking to it. Yeah. You know, and that's why you got all of Paul's missionary journeys, you know, the whole map of where he was going. He wasn't there every single week for, for a service. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, again, see, the whole thing is I understand the mindset of the church building people. OK, I was been in them for a long time, 44 years old. OK, I've been around that stuff. It is a social club. All right. I mean, let's just let's yep. just break it down here. OK, let's just be honest. You go to the average church building, you're going to hear after the service stories about hunting, politics, weather, job, pretty much anything but the scripture. Okay? I mean, don't, don't even kid me. You don't know, look the whole thing. I mean, Liberty Baptist Church went through down in Ephrata, Pennsylvania many years ago. We first started the whole house church thing. Um, way back then. I would talk about the Bible with brethren and and the pastor would say about how these young guys are so, you know, fervent and whatever else. Because we talked about the Bible after the service. You know, it was just all this unheard of thing. These these young guys talking about the Bible. It was weird to church building people that we talked about the Bible. But I know, of course, the people out there with church buildings, they, they're going to say, oh, but our church is different. It's, it's different. We're different than that. We don't do Sunday best and we, we, we're not 501c3 and we're <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, church buildings are not of God. Mm-hmm. That. And meeting together with, with brethren and, and stuff, you know, I mean, fine. But, but do something. Meet together and say, hey, you want to go out and go tracting? Hey, let's go out and let's do this or whatever else or do something besides your little social club that meets every week. And then you start to bring the food and you get the little, you know, the fellowship dinners and everything else. And, and it's a little bit, you know, carnal. Some of the stuff you know, I just, you know, it, it gags me to mm-hmm. even about that whole system. I don't even want anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. Anybody wants to come up here and, and meet with us or whatever else. And, and I mean, we've, we've met with people in the area up here. We love it. We'll talk for hours with people. You know, again, it's not a, well, we got nine to 12 here. You know, we got to get home. You know, Sunday sermon's over and, you know, the pot roast is in the supper at home. And, you know, like, uh-uh, no, we we have spent five, six hours talking to people and had a great time. And the only reason. Yeah, that happened just at night with, with me and Tim and other brother. We're talk, we talked for five hours. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's it? Nine to twelve stuff, just like uh-huh. the Catholics and, and the other institutional churches do, you know. Yeah. But yeah. They, they protect that sacred little thing there, you know, and, and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And oh, you 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 bump into it, and it, oh, you know, it's like hitting a hornet's nest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, oh and, and then I, I always love that. I always love after the service. Then we all go to Chick Fil A as, as good Christians we are, you know. <laughs> you, you know, Chick Fil A. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, <laughs> Chick Fil A. <laughs> But yeah, um, you know, the the whole thing of um, and uh, most important thing I, I, you know, I also need to say very, very clearly is uh, to all you younger brethren out there that that, you know, um, to all the younger brethren out there, do not let one single person ever make you feel like you are in dis- disobedience or not right with God if you're not in a constant local fellowship. Don't yeah. ever do it because there's no chapter and verse that commands you and says you're not right if you don't meet all the time. You know, there's that yearn there. We all yearn to meet with each other and, and hang out and have fellowship and everything, but we also have work we have to do. A good example as well is uh, just, just recently for uh, for Christmas, we had um, we had Brother Jake Mays over. For, for those of you who who tune in that know of my channel and everything, I did a lot of podcasts and streams with Brother Jake, Jake Mays, and he has a channel here on YouTube as well. And he came over for Christmas, and it was so – we had so much fun – we, I mean, he was here for three days and we, I mean, just the fellowship with that brother, you know, we stayed up till 3 a.m. some nights talking about just giving testimony about things in our lives, thing, lost people, things like that, things going on. Just the fellowship there was just beautiful and amazing. We sat down, read scripture, read through Psalms together and everything. Uh, he, we played chess together. We played the game of chess. He won. <laughs> but um, uh, the, the thing is, is that 
we met, we had a fellowship. And then what happened? He had to go back to do his work in his area. And I'm back to doing my work in my area. But it's not this constant, well, we have to be in fellowship or we're somehow in sin. You know, this online stuff doesn't count. And it's not none of that. And you shouldn't let anyone make you feel that way either because it's wrong. And for them to say that without backing it up with a chapter and verse, you need to watch out for that. You need to watch out for someone out there that just talks all the time and never brings up the chapter and verse. Mm-hmm. That's really, really dangerous stuff. Yeah. yeah and, and watch the pride thing. You'll see that with a lot of yeah. these people, especially the ones that go through the, the Bible college, the Bible schooling thing. They'll just say, oh, you haven't arrived yet. Or, oh, well, you're, you're, I can help you. I can come talk to you and help you. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah, makes me angry. But you know, the the whole thing too is you'll hear this. They'll say another one of the the big ones that they'll use. They'll say, okay, there's not a good Bible believing church in your area, but you need to go to a church anyhow. So go yeah. to one that doesn't agree with you, and you don't have to agree with them in everything. Just go there and try to find people of like faith and and whatever else, and share with them and whatever. Uh, the New Testament is very plain. You don't compromise on doctrine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and eight through 18 talks about marking and avoiding people that, that you know, preach false doctrine. Uh, you know, first Timothy chapter six, verse three through five again says, you know, from such withdrawal thyself, you know, it doesn't say, well, just kind of overlook it and whatever else. Again, church buildings are businesses, mm-hmm. literally, you know, even if they're not incorporated under IRS code 501c3. Yep. yep which means that they're tax exempt. They don't have to pay taxes, which they don't have to pay taxes. Anyhow, you don't need government permission to do that, but side issue, even if they're not 501 C three, they are still a business. They still have a monthly payment paying off their building and all the expenses that go along with it, all the utilities and everything else they need to make money. Okay. So they are going to, to not preach the entire council of scripture. There are certain things that they're just going to have to avoid. And that's the truth. I mean, you name it. I mean, I literally have Peter Ruckman's book, Dr. Peter Sturgis Ruckman's book on how to build a church. And he literally says, this isn't in the scripture. That's not in the scripture. There are no church buildings. There's no padded pews. There's no this, there's no that. But you do it anyhow, because that's what the people are going to pay for. I mean, he literally tells you how to get around the scriptures to make a profitable business. That's what church buildings are. That's all they are. They're social clubs that make a make money for some guy. That's again, see, you telling people you don't need to go to church building someplace, you are effectively hurting the business of the church buildings. That's why they're going to get they they feel threatened by you and they will put you down and say you need to get into some place locally, even if you don't agree. And the Bible does not say that, you know. Yep. It, it's so upsetting. And then, and then they'll do the thing. Oh, you think that you're perfect. You think that you're right. and Everybody else is wrong. And you're so holy that you don't need to go to fellowship with people. Again, that is not, you know, that it's, a, it's a very, very weak argument. Nobody here thinks that they're perfect. None of us, none of the three of us think that we're perfect doctrinally and that we don't make a mistake or whatever else. Um, again, I will meet with anybody. I, you know, the, the, I met with a sister the one time and she had, you know, immodest clothing on and whatever else. And, and uh, I think she was still smoking cigarettes at the time and whatever. And she was crying and we met with her and we wept with her and, and hugged her and everything. I mean, and, and shared with the Bible with her, you know, it's not about, Oh, we, we don't want to meet with people because they don't come up to our perfect standards of holiness and, and whatever else. And that is, it's doctrine and mm-hmm. church buildings to even have a church building. You have to go against the Bible. You know, and then and then all the doctrinal issues that most church buildings have, there's there's no way you cannot go in fellowship with those places. So, yep. There's very strict commands, you know, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. I'm not going into some place that's just full of, you know, he believes this, he believes that, this person I'm saved, this and we're just all gonna just pretend like this doesn't exist and we're you know. Forget that, you know. Yeah, I mean, because again, I mean, I, I've, I'll tell you, it, for personal testimony, I've never really been in a whole lot of church buildings my entire life. I, because I, I did, I did, a, I did like, I did the Easter Sunday thing every year till I think I was ten, I mean, maybe maybe slightly younger. Um, 
And, you know, again, and, and of course I wouldn't, I didn't learn anything doctrinally. I, I was just there for the Easter egg hunt, you know? And then <laughs> that's all, that's, again, that's all we did. We just, it was just the Easter egg. I remember, I, I remember it was so funny. It was my, my grandma's church on my mom's side. I'm, I mean, um, and we go, I don't, I don't even know what it was. It's some sort of, I think I want to say, I don't think it was Catholic, but it was definitely a Protestant for sure. If nothing, but I mean, what's the difference, <laughs> but, um, and we get, we get in there. We, we didn't do anything. They literally had the kids saying like, are you happy? You know, like, clap your hands. And we just, we did that. And we did, you know, Easter egg hunts. And then we'd go get like, pri it was just, it was the most dumbest thing ever. And then I, of course we, I'd sit on the Easter bunnies lap and, <laughs> and you know, it's, it's so stupid. And then, but so that's the only church I've been to. I mean, I've, and, and I've been in a few like Presbyterian ones that are like this and you go in there and it's just, all the the you know the tapestries and the, the the mosaics and it's like none of this is in scripture you know and it's it's just all these traditions of men that's just totally vain you know i mean i just the whole with like you know cookie cutter thing every single week i hate that so much you know you know i i i agree there needs to be standards and there needs to be okay 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 this is what we're going to do that's what paul had paul had he was kicking the corinthians for that you know in first corinthians uh, that was at 14 um but the the regimented like religion thing new no, that is nowhere in scripture you know for, for you know in paul's epistles i'll say it like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and uh you know on on that same uh on that same note the whole testimony of church buildings i've i've you know seen i've seen this thing my myself on the, the church building system and everything i've been to been to several i mean i got a, i got some really good stories on this i mean the i remember the very first time i realized just how wicked church buildings were was uh, the one time I was talking to somebody that that was part of the little fellowship we had on Sundays. And I remember, you know, I was at the time I was really trying to learn and seek truth. And I send the guy in the, in the uh, local fellowship, one of uh, Brother Brian's videos, and I, I send it to him via text message. And within 20 minutes, within 20 minutes, he calls me up and he's just rambling on. He's saying, you, you know, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of the knowledge, but there's not a whole lot of love there. And I'm just, I remember I like cocked my head to the side and I thought to myself, what, he, this, this is spiritual truth. I'm getting fed. What do I care how it's coming across? I mean, you know, um, it, you gotta, the Bible talks about contemptible speech, Paul having contemptible speech, and you need to turn off that hypersensitivity, that wicked brainwashing of hypersensitive hypersensitivity to people's speech and listen to the truth being presented because that's what's important the scriptures and paul spoke with contemptible speech and it's not something that somebody should be freaking out over and i just i'll never forget that just saying there's not a whole lot of love there well in truth that is real love real love is being able to tell the truth without with you know without compromise and that's what it's all about you know it's, it's not about the way you, you know being really nice not want to hurt anyone's feelings no you Part of the gospel is you need to start trembling before God. You need to start realizing you're a sinner before God. You have to tremble and be scared of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I mean, that's, and you know, just seeing that in a person who's in a church building that's just hypersensitive to the speech of someone is just, you know, that's how they all are. They're all of this lascivious nature. They all cannot stand this idea of someone preaching hard. And then another story too, is I went to another church building after a while and they, they actually discovered my YouTube channel and they had a problem with some of the things I was saying. <laughs> and they, and I told them and they, uh, at, I remember at the time I was telling them how I was going to rename my channel to authorized version Bible thumper ministries. And the head pastor of the church looks at me and says, why would you name it that? That's what the world thinks of us. I was like, well, exactly, because we're supposed to be Bible thumpers. We're supposed to be going to the scriptures, going to the scriptures, going to the scriptures. That's what it's all about. So, you know, and, and that's the same church building where we went out for, uh, what was it? Uh, the, after the whole church service, we went out to, um, I believe it was a, China, a sushi restaurant and all the young adults of that group, the moment they were out of that church, sitting around having dinner with us and everything, they just start letting cuss words fly. They just start letting, oh, 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 I said the B word. Oh, oh, I said this word. And I'm just looking at them like, you were a completely different person in the church building. Now you're just cussing up a storm. You're openly talking about the sodomites that you work with at your work being funny. What is that? That's not the kind of attitude you're supposed to have. You're supposed to be condemning that wickedness. You, just because you're out of the church building doesn't mean you let the cuss words fly and you let absolutely not. Just like Brian said, we are in church all the time. Mm -hmm. If you're not oh, constantly accountable to God, what are you?
you sound like a fake. I mean, if you're not accountable to God in and out of the church, you're a fake. Yep. As simple as that. Absolutely. So now people are going to say you were scarred by your past experiences, and that's why you hate church buildings. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't even call it a scar. It's evidence, complete and yeah. utter evidence. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, well, hey, well, I did because I did a video recently. Uh, just uh, I, I, I call it if on my channel here called Christianity 2020, and it was just an example, just a little. Well, it was not little, but <laughs> but it, it was is you know this church. Uh, near my area i mean and you can go check it out she's they got this female pastor she's up there wearing her you know her you know her very modest clothing um and and, and she's up there telling people and she, she's in there mocking people that um that that that, that, that actually preach messages that are convicting and she's all going like yeah we're not gonna do that here today you know we believe god's a good god i'm just mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm like oh geez <laughs> yep yeah, it's just that the whole the whole structure of the church building thing, it just it takes people away from getting to know the Lord personally. And I mean, you can't teach the word of God on a high level in a in a church building. There's just yep. too other too much other stuff that has to happen. And you got the money issue that's always pressing down on you as a pastor. I got to pay, make the payments. How am I going to make the payments? I got to get the, the giving up and all this other stuff. And it, it's just, it's always there. And, and what if I offend the wrong person? I mean, again, the pastor, the one Baptist church I went to, he had a million dollar insurance policy because if he gives bad counsel and somebody blows their brains out or whatever, and then the church gets sued. Yeah. Up to a million dollar coverage chapter and verse, you know, what, what in the world is this? You know, you just yeah. the stuff and you think, okay you know and 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 you get into the legal aspects of the whole thing too where you actually get into the when you have a 501c3 building or you know a church building that's under 501c3 incorporation you don't even own the building and you can't sell the building you could pay it off with your phenomenal preaching but you don't own the building and if you want to get rid of it you actually have to transfer it to another 501c3 organization be it a church or whatever and I mean, that's rules of incorporation. You can't just take and just, oh, we're, we're done. We're going to sell it, whatever. It is a federal government building. Again, I mean, you know, I, I've, I've preached on this stuff for years. And, I, you know, I say, shouldn't this freak people out? It's kind of, oh, well, you know, it's not that bad. And they, okay. Uh, how's this tie into the Antichrist system? You know, they will worship the beast. Where do you worship at? Church buildings. As I've said for a long time. So, but you know, when you get saved, when you get truly born again, you will meet these church building people and they will put you down for not fellowshipping locally or whatever else. Um, and that's a problem. I mean, it is a, it is a real problem when these people try to do that to you. And, you know, as brother Tim said earlier, you know, don't let people talk down to you on that issue. Um, if you're studying the Bible and you're really learning a lot, Lord's showing you a lot, praise the Lord. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. and you get to a point where your relationship to, with the Lord will get really strong and you're going to feel that courage to start witnessing to people and start giving tracts out or whatever, talking about the Lord. And you can go to a church building for years and years and years and never develop that because it's just always sermons on giving and, and we're having a fellowship supper and all this stuff, you know, even from the best church groups. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and I saw somebody said in the comments, okay, but what is the place for elders and deacons and whatever else it's in the Bible? What's the place for that? Well, if your group that you're, if you're in an area and you get to witness in the people and people get saved and start coming in and Hey, we have a lot of people. Well, okay. Then you need a Bishop. Then you need an elder, a, a deacon. You know, you start to appoint people over that, that, you know, those affairs and things. But I don't think that it should all be in one place where you get thousands of people coming because it always leads to trouble. Mm -hmm. Again, I've studied a lot of the old, you know, preachers and things from the early 1900s, late 1800s. Uh, the, the, at one point in time, before Jack Hiles dethroned him, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, J. Frank Nars. 
Pastor J. Frank Norris. Uh, he was in Fort Worth, Texas, I think it was, and Detroit, Michigan. Okay. He had two different Baptist churches, and at that time, they were the two largest Baptist churches in the world. I think each one had something like 10,000 members or something. There was 20,000 members total. And, you know, people just idolized the guy and whatever else. But, I mean, reading his writings, and it was just trouble after trouble after trouble, you know. And, and he was, there was a women's fellowship thing, and he he brought them all into his office, and he said, congratulations, you're dismissed. You know, <laughs> I'm shutting your whole fellowship thing down because it's just a gossip fest. And just fighting and fighting and fighting. He had a church member come in the one time, try to kill him with a pistol, and he ended up having to pull his gun and shoot the guy. You know, and it was all over the news, you know, mm -hmm. uh, packing preacher, you know, uh, whatever else and stuff. Uh, they burned his church building down the one time. I mean, just problem after problem after problem. What's the deal? God didn't say to build a church building. So as soon as you build a church building, you're outside of scripture. Yep. Even Peter Ruckman admitted, admitted it is anti-New Testament. Not, not really there or what. It's anti-New Testament to build a church building. Mm -hmm. And and so, again, you have to remember that stuff. You know, when you get saved and you get pressured by these people, you know, where's your local fellowship and all this stuff? Um, you know, and another point, which I think needs to be brought up, we are in the end times. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a falling away. It's not getting better. You know, we're not going to have another day of Pentecost before the catching up. You know, um, there's less and less people. Um, so to say, well, we, we have to be able to have deacons and elders and everything else in every situation where somebody's saved, you need to set that stuff up. Those things are not needed unless you have a, a, enough people. It's as simple as that. Now, you know, there are men out there that preach and teach the truth. And you can learn from them if they're using the King James Bible. Certainly watch them, listen to them. Um, all three of us put out videos and you can learn from them. None of us are perfect. None of us are trying to, you know, say, oh, you have to be part of this or whatever. You're not saved or you know, whatever. Um, learn from from men that are preaching and teaching from the King James Bible. Uh, listen to stuff, you know, from years ago, some of the older preachers and whatever. Be careful. Always check them out with the Bible. But. You know, to say that you have to have somebody there locally that you can submit yourself to, you know, that's an issue. And mm -hmm. another thing I like to ask these guys, they say, you need to, you need to have a pastor over top of you. Okay. For how long? Your whole life. Uh, what happens when you get older? You know, uh, at some point in time, you know, <laughs> shouldn't you get to a point where you can, you know, kind of preach the word yourself or whatever and, you know, you know, it, it's just well, no, 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 see, but that's, that's the thing after that. Now, now you've elevated that level towards where now you can leave it and go have your own building and, and, and keep building a little mini kingdom. And you got the big, you know, <laughs> it, it's like, like you said, it comes down to if it, it's not in scripture. And if you once you build it, it's it, it's it's an idol now. You're attached to it because now you have to keep it. Even if it's a, you know, even if it's like a, a totally cruddy run down piece of junk you know you still have to just somewhat there still has to be some level of upkeep to it there's some level of this you some you know of the where you're just attached to it and like you said it's not in it because he designed the the church to be flexible because mm -hmm. they're all over the place you know and mm -hmm. and persecution and this and that you know you can't have all these centralized little kingdom and that's all they are they that's it's, it's catholicism they're building little kingdoms and that's why even in today too because now now you see it now it's being oh, this whole thing of the kingdom building now it's being the repackaged as of the new Re apostolic reformation i talked about a little bit in my my one book Romans Ten controversy but they they their their whole big thing is you know we got to fight to bring the kingdom back and and we've got to take over the government and all and the economy and, and the media and turn it all to christ and then and then and then we can bring christ back in this it you know Weird, weird. It, it's Pentecostalism taken to a whole whacked out extreme, mm -hmm. uh, but that's what they're trying to do. They, and they openly tell you, we're literally trying to build the kingdom. I mean, they're that's they're they're trying to do, and and that's all it is. It's just, it's just for the Antichrist. They're just trying to take control. And that and then those same people that are part of that, they're currently right now working with our president. 
you know, Paula White, she, 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 she's running around saying I'm a self-proclaimed apostle right now. And, and I, I, mean, I give all the quotation in the book, she, in the book, she's sitting there telling people like, if, if you don't sow seed, you know, as in donations, if you don't sow seed your ministry, you're going to die. But if you do, you know, but if you do, but if you do, people in your family are going to be saved. Like what? You know, you know, <laughs> yeah, really. I used to always say they that they should just say you, know, you sow the seed, we'll provide the manure. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> Pile it higher and deeper. Yeah, got the shovel and everything. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, it, it just I think you know the, the whole thing is, and, and and you know another thing I need to say about the whole church building deal. Another one of the really dangerous things is the thing of Sunday school. Um, childhood conversion, you know, yep. is the VBS thing too. Major, yeah, and vacation Bible school. Where's it at in the scripture? Show me. Show me where parents are, or you know, older people are supposed to be teaching other people's children. Where's it at? You know, um, it's not there. And what happens is, again, that push for members. We got to get people in here. We got to get them in. We got to get, you know, we'll go out, we'll have bus ministries, and we'll go get people's children from out there, take them out of their homes on Sunday morning, take them to church, you know, church. And which again, there's molestation problems there. Hiles Anderson cult there. That was always happening out there. There's one of their most fervent bus ministry guys. I don't remember the guy's name, but um, he was molesting children, other people's children. But, you know, you take this child and then you just yell and scream at them that they need to get saved and, you know, and they they explain the gospel to them or whatever else. And you have these guys coming out saying, I got saved when I was two years old in Sunday yeah. school, or, you know, five years old or six years old. Or something. Now, I, mean, I was a product of that. I was the product. Mm -hmm. I thought for years, I'm a Christian because I prayed the prayer when I was a child in Sunday school. Sure. And I made, the, I made my Sunday school teacher happy and I got a box of candy because I became a Christian. Yeah. You know? No, it's wrong. No. And again, I, and, and uh, Harry, what, what are they doing? They are damning people to hell with that. Yep. Yep. No, that's and that's the thing. Like, say someone like they, they, they I got, oh, I got saved when I was three or four years old. You were, you, you, it wasn't too long ago. You were literally sucking on a binky wearing diapers. I mean, what do you, how, mm -hmm. you know, how on earth are you going to understand that you sinned against God? God, these, for God, they saw work of repentance to salvation, not repented of, but they saw the world work of death. How are you going to have any concept of that as yep. five years old? And you can't. You know, well, see, they didn't put their toys away the one day and they realized oh, oh, sitting hey. against the dog here. <laughs> ah, there, there you go. You know, didn't eat all their green beans or something, you know, and I just, I yeah. don't know for this. I got to get saved. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they, they they pulled on the tablecloth and and smacked the dishes. Oh, I gotta get saved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I stole a cookie from the cookie jar. Oh man, yeah. God, forgive me. Yeah, yeah. it's just uh, that's just it, it, even then again, I never prayed the prayer type thing when it, like you like you guys did, but because when I was younger, I was just told. Uh, I mean, I literally was just told just believe God. In, in other words, as long as you recognize He exists. I guess you're okay. I mean, there, there wasn't even talk of, are you, are you saved or lost? It's just kind of this, bleh, you know, okay. You're, you're, you're going there regardless, basically, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you know, <clears throat> and it's, it's interesting because in the time of Jacob's trouble, you do definitely see you know, revelation seven talks about a great multitude that no man could number that gets saved. So, you know, there are going to be people that are going to get saved, but it's going to be because, you know, it's, it's kind of funny how the, how things are going to flip, I believe. You have people right now who receive not the love of the truth in church buildings. They hate the truth. You go to the average church building and start talking to them about, you know, the King James Bible is God's perfect word. and The others are from the Vatican and wicked. Or you say the Pope is is an antichrist or, you know, whatever else. And they'll get angry at you. Yep. So I think a lot of the people out there in the lost world right now are, are just saying, I don't want anything to do with this whole church building thing. It's just no, thank you. I don't want anything to do with it. So what's going to happen is you have the professing modern Christians here and the lost people here that don't want anything to do with religion. And I think what's going to happen, you know, when we get called up body of Christ leaves, it's going to go like this. And now you're going to have the lost people, you know, of today that are against church buildings, probably going to say, Whoa, wait a second. What was that that happened? But the church building people are going to be saying, Christ has returned. Look, he's, he's made this 
covenant over there in Israel, and this is wonderful. And you know, Jesus has come back. Yeah, and he's a Catholic. Imagine that, you know. And um, so it, it just this whole church building thing, I believe, is part of the end times. You know, strong delusion that God's going to send. Mm-hmm. And um, and so to see people saying, you know, you have to be part of some local fellowship and whatever else. And where's your where's your the man that's over you the 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 spiritual head there you have to have that they watch for your soul and all this other stuff well the bible says that yeah but if it's like a first corinthians 11 through sorry first corinthians 11 3 christ is the head of man he is my head Mm -hmm. that's right yep and it you know to me it's it's an elder is simply there if you need one Mm -hmm. you know if if there's a bunch of people that get saved in your area well of course you pick out the older men that know the Bible well and whatever else, and you appoint them as elders and things. And I mean, there's a lot of people getting saved right now. Well, you need that government, so to speak, in the, within the church. Fine. You know, nobody's arguing that. We're not trying to say, you know, break down the structure of anybody, you know, uh, teaching or preaching the word of God as far as men and within the church. That's fine. But this this stupid nonsense of you have to move to some place if you don't have a pastor in your area that you can submit yourself to. You have to move to some place. Mm-hmm. You, you just need to be there to, you know, you need to have this man that you submit to. Again, this whole church building structure where you have, you know, I did a you know, study many years ago. This guy, John Dorsey, never forget the guy's name, the guy with the professional wrestler sounding, you know, screaming and he's oh, that guy. I don't care how wrong he is. You keep your hands off the man of God. You don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we well oh, there's some other guy you, you, you showed too that what's is the Stan rich guy. He who was just literally telling everyone like, what about you? You're this lazy bum. I ain't going to marry you. And you're, you know, there's yeah. somebody, off some power. Power room. You're, you're, you're fooling around. I know what you're doing. Yeah. Make your little kingdom in the video room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not gonna have that. I'm an important man. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you know, you have, you really? know, I just got to kick somebody, Charles Lawson. Yeah. You know, guy comes out, you know, uh, Constantine. I, I don't know if he was a Christian operator, but he was a saved man. Amen. You know, and, and, yeah. You're going, Constantine, the founder of Catholicism, uh, huh? You know, yeah, guy, right. I shouldn't say founder, but the guy that basically oh. started a lot of the thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 Constantine was the guy that got the whole ball rolling, really. I mean, yeah. Well, and, yeah. Even, then, and even just, I, I'll toss a name out there too. I mean, he's on YouTube, and I like some of the stuff he comes out with, but he, and he's one of Ruckman's graduates, but uh, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Sluter, Andrew Sluter. He's got some good stuff out there, but you hear him all the time. He's sitting there talking about all, all you know all this church building stuff and the bus ministry and stuff like that. And he and he they, they got the guy literally still praises Jack Hiles. Like, dude, come on! Like, are you that? Like, are you that willingly stupid that you're gonna endorse Jack Hiles, knowing of all? I mean, again, they're they're fully aware of who you are, Brian. Your studies, like, come on, you're still gonna endorse that? That and that stuff that's just ridiculous. And yeah, I mean, Jack Hiles, he can have himself with his own mouth. Yeah, it isn't even about well. There's just bitter church members and things. I mean, just the whole system is wicked. And again, you get the you look at the the video clip of of uh, Jack Scapp, and he's up there and he's doing that polished shaft thing. Oh my gosh! And the guys are just sitting there. Yeah. Well, oh, I don't want to disturb the service. I can't rebuke the man of God up there. <laughs> wasn't he? Wasn't he the same guy too? At, at his when Jack Hiles was dead and they were doing the doing the search for him, he, he was up there saying like saying Jack Hiles is in all of us or something like that. He was I, something like that. See, that's just that, that's a cult. I mean, that's that's, that's a full on cult. Oh, he's in me, and, and we and, and 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 we've got to you know follow the way he's doing things, even though he's already dead. You know, mm-hmm. that, that's a that's a brainwashed cult. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, what does the Bible say? You know, as far as ministers of Satan, they appear as the ministers of righteousness. So where are they going to be at? Where can they get control? You know, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'll just say here, I, you find out I'm a minister of Satan. This, that little audio thing's probably going to get cut now, but you know, uh, what do you do? You delete this channel and stop watching. But if I can get you into a church building with, 
200 other people going there, you're going to get that, that mass mind control type of a thing. Everybody else is, you know, saying amen. I guess I should say amen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, again, it's a control mechanism. The bigger the church, the more control you can exert over the person as the head of that system. Roman Catholicism. Hello. Yep. You know, and, and like you said, I mean, there, there's still guys out there today. Like, I mean, really good point, brother Jacob. I mean, just, oh, you know, brother Howells, man, brother Howells, he preached. The guy is in hell burning. Yep. Wicked. He is the reason why for all the, all the quick prayer. I mean, we want one of the big reasons why for that. It's like openly yeah. preaching against repentance. Yeah. Yep. It wasn't that he just preached a false doctrine and, and didn't kick true, you know, salvation. No, he kicked it. Yeah. Wicked. And, and, and that's what annoys me about again someone like Sluter, he who who has kicked so many times, he's kicked Stephen Anderson and, and, and his little and his cronies all the time, and he, and he does a good job of doing it. But then he uplifts Howells, like that's where they came from, like that that's the source, you know. <laughs> and 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 I I've seen Anderson's people, they're they're looking at Sluter going like, you're crazy, like that's you you condemn us, but then you you the Howells, I mean, because there's there's videos where he actually has a picture of Howells on his wall next to Ruckman. And they and they were and they were diametrically diametrically opposed. Like yeah. I actually heard um, a guy, a former Hiles church member, and went to Hiles Anderson College and whatever else. And he actually said that there is an album out there. I think it's an album, or a, it's either music or a, a preaching thing or whatever else. And Jack Hiles, or it might, it might even be a book cover. I forget. But Jack Hiles is kneeling down, you know, in his office, and he's kneeling praying. And be right behind him, you can actually see the door, the secret door that he had that connected his secretary, Jenny Nishik's office with his. And mm -hmm. they covered the door up years later, you know, and oh, there, there was never a door there. You can see it on the cover of this thing. And the guy said, you know, Google it or whatever else. And I, I should find it, but it's, you know, maybe do a video on it or something. But literally, you can see the guy's door that he had where he would go over and mess with, you know, a married man's wife. And, mm -hmm. and it's and he's he's doing it right in front of your face, you know. I mean, the guy was wicked. He was a minister of Satan. Yep. And but again, see, if you have a church building, if you have that church building, you have to uplift the other heroes of the faith that had church buildings. You know, you compare yourself with other men that had church buildings, and you say, well, J. Frank Norris, he had a good church building. No, he didn't. It was filled with problems. Uh, yep. Brother Ruckman, he had a good church building. Uh, no, it, no, he didn't. It was filled with problems, and it has fallen apart since then. Yep. Ryan Donovan's driven in the thing into the ground, from what I've heard from different people, because he's basically mid-trib now. He's not even, you know, what we call pre-trib rapture. Jeez. You know, he teaches that that you know the body of Christ has to see the Antichrist before we can leave and whatever else. You know, <coughs> other things. You know, <laughs> ridiculous. Bunch yeah. of nonsense. So. You know, <laughs> the point is, it's a mess, folks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's the falling away. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And and that's the thing. And, and and we've all discussed and obviously we all know this, but I know I'm not going to compromise to this stuff. Yeah. Nope. 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 I, yeah. I, I can't get I can't do it. And that's the that's the thing. You know, again, when, you know, with the position I'm in. The Lord has blessed me so exponentially being isolated, being isolated. And he's specifically be able to mouse. I've learned from from you, Brian, and I've learned from other brothers as Tim and other people too. But the stuff that the Lord has shown me on my own has been the stuff that just sticks with me the most. And it's just like, whoa, it's just so awesome. If I can, for lack of a better term. And again, because like, like I said, I was here just a couple weeks ago doing the the thing for, for about the Godhead. Some of the stuff he has shown me, I have never heard anyone else ever preach or even talk about or hit on and no glory to myself. I'm just saying, and just, but that's, that's how God can show you. If you get to that real isolated point, point where you're just, you're meditating upon his word and it's just you and him, you know, it's a, it, again, like almost like a husband wife thing, you know, you know, the body, you know, part of his body, you're a wife, you know, in, in a sense, you know, and he's, you know, that spiritual husband to you and you, and he starts teaching you, you just learn so many things, so many things. And frankly, quite quicker. I mean, I, I mean, I, and I've said it before to people too, I learned more, and this, and this is going back when I, I was still in school. You know, people, I would sit there and say, "It's like, guys, I man, I've learned way more in the last what two years, you know, whatever, you know, 
reading this time my Bible and being saved than I ever have in the last 12 years of going to school or you know, whatever, how many years it was I said, you know, I mean, because that's the thing. You don't learn anything in there or the church bones or this. Then just two years of being on my own, I hardly fellowship with anyone. I don't think I fellowship with anyone yet like this. I don't think I did that yet. And I had learned so much at that point, you know. And that's the point, that point of isolation. It's a perfect relationship. Mm -hmm. And and that's why those people that they're all hot, you know, in these church building setups, you t you see them a lot of their church or a lot of their um, personal relationships aren't very good because they, as we said, even even if they're they're saved and they're told no, no doubt, they still put on the they still put on the front act, mm -hmm. and, and then and then their lives eternally with the Lord are an absolute wreck. At church, oh, they look great, amen, amen, you know, but then you go home and it's falling apart, everything, you know, because yeah. that's, that's yeah. not there. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, on the, on the same note of, you know, how we mentioned, you know, the, uh, the church being flexible and things like that, you know, just, I, I do want to make a, a good point here. And uh, JT, I, I mentioned this to you the other night when we were talking on the phone and everything, but, you know, let's just say, for example, like I had a local fellowship going on here and you were really close, JT, you lived within 20 minutes of the local fellowship. And we were meeting, you know, say we were meeting a lot, this, that, and this, but then, you know, you're working on a very important book right now and everything, you know, let's say the fellowship's going to be, you know, that week and then you want to come and then let's say, you know, you're stuck beer betwixt too with this. Should I stay home and work on this very important book for the Lord? The Lord's laid on my heart or should I go and fellowship with Tim next right. week comes you say you chose to come fellowship uh, here next week comes the same thing happens again. Should I do the book or go fellowship with Tim and the, you know, us wanting to be together and ha be, have that friendship and be there. Say that's all of a sudden your, your flesh is kind of like saying, well, just put off the book again, just put it off again so I can go fellowship. Where's, you know, is that, is that really, would the Lord look at that and say, is that really right? Or would you, would you actually be in more obedience to the Lord staying home for a little bit forsaking mm -hmm. the fellowship so you can get your work done for the Lord that he's put on your heart? A amen to that exactly. If we were in a local fellowship and that was happening, I would openly tell you over the phone, JT, don't come until you finish the book or finish this chapter. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would tell you personally, I would say, JT, no, I've, I know you're trying to work on this and it seems like you're putting the fellowship before your own work for the Lord. Stay home, get it done. That's the way it should be. It shouldn't be this. Well, you're in disobedience, JT. You have to come to fellowship. I mean, don't you want to don't you want to be obedient to the word of God? You know, I mean, that, that book can wait. That book can wait. No, right. and, and, and that's and that's the point there. You know, the whole thing of again, people just say, "Well, just move." So stop. So so so, so just so just stop, drop, and roll the work the, the 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 work the Lord has for me. So I can just just so I can just sit there for an hour, an hour a week. Just you know, you know, you, you know. You, so, so we can talk about the same old thing every week. Yay, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gotta talk about yeah. the weather and politics as well. That's important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but you know, and, and the whole thing is, you know, the, the issue of infiltration again, be honest about it. How many people infiltrate church buildings? You know, they do all the time. I mean, there are guys that'll go to a church building because they're looking for a, a young Christian woman and wanting to do other things with her, you know, that are not appropriate. Mm -hmm. Let's just yep. be honest about it. It happens a lot. Yep. You know, so. Oh, we can get this church building thing. How are you going to keep people out that are lost? You know, I mean, again, where does the where's the New Testament say that we're just supposed to invite saved and lost in and whatever? It's not there. You know, and they'll go to First Corinthians fourteen. They'll say about you know if a unbeliever comes in and hears you all talking in tongues, you know, will he not say that you're mad? You know, and they'll say, well, see, right there, lost people coming in. <laughs> uh, no, they're having a public meeting and somebody comes in and sees them all babbling like idiots. Yeah. Uh, that's what's going on there. It's not saying have a church building that saved and lost can come to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it just, you know, again, I saw somebody in the comments saying about what's the point of a, having a pastor then according to the scriptures. It's it's a pastor is there, an elder, bishop, whatever you want to call them. Um, they are there when the need arises. Okay. A lot of people start getting saved or whatever else. Um, okay, sure. You get 30, 40, 50 people together that, you know, you get this neighbor saved and they tell their friends and they whatever else. Um, but you have to look at things dispensationally and say, OK, where are we at in this timeline? 
you know, I mean, when the, the time of Jacob's trouble happens, Revelation chapter 10 talks about the mystery of God being finished. Mm -hmm. People are going to say there's not going to be any atheists at that point in time. Nobody's going to be saying, okay, I don't know if there's any proof for the Bible. I mean, every, you know, however long the time period, the interval between the seals being open and the, you know, the, the trumpets and the vials being, you know, poured out and things. I don't know what the time interval is going to be there, but it's going to be kind of a playbook of what's going to come next, you know, and people are going to say, hey, okay, this God stuff, the Bible is real. And, you know, when the catching up happens, you know, uh, it's going to be quite significant for people. Right now, people, you know, it's like their ears are dull of hearing, like the Bible says. They just don't want to hear about it, and, eh, you know, whatever. But there's some there's some big events that are coming. OK, the economies of this world are about ready to collapse. They are in, you know, collapse mode right now. Stock mm -hmm. markets falling apart and everything else. People are going to lose a lot. In the next couple of years and when people do they start to think about god and when mm -hmm. the up happens they're really going to think about god mm -hmm. and will there be need for more church authority and whatever else and not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 in the time of jacob's trouble yes absolutely yep. you know it's that stuff's going to come but right now with the way things are um, to say we all have to have local fellowships in our area with, you know, at least, you know, 30 people in attendance or something, uh, you're living in some other kind of a reality that I'm not aware of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, you know, brother, to your point about yeah. the pastor, his job is just to be an overseer. He's not to be some, mm -hmm. well, he, he's not a Pope over you. He's just an yep. overseer just to, well, it means what it means. He's an overseer, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, first Corinthians 14, you know, talks about a woman not supposed to speak when, you know, the church all gets together. And if she was to learn anything, let her, you know, ask her or she has a question, essentially, let her ask her husband at home. Yeah. And yet you get you get these church buildings and it's, well, I don't know, honey, why don't you call the pastor? We're paying his salary. He went to Bible school. He's a smart one. Mm -hmm. I can't answer that question. That's the pastor. <laughs> yep. You no, know, we got we got a sick relative in the hospital that needs to hear the gospel. Let's call the pastor and have him go visit. Yeah. <laughs> Our pocket preacher. Let's send him. Yeah. Know. So. <laughs> yeah. But you know that I just there's, I think the thing that irritates me probably the most out of the whole deal is just the thing of personal accountability. They do this thing, you know, who are you accountable to? You know, <laughs> thank the Lord, the Lord. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a thought. <laughs> well, if you're in sin, you should be confessing your sins to your priest. I mean, uh, pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I need to set up a time for counseling pastor. I can't handle my problems myself. You know, <laughs> or you know, or you know, I, I need to come to your house and inspect everything because you know you're you can't uh, do it do it between you and the Lord. I have to come there and inspect everything. <laughs> like, come yeah. on. Yeah. If we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Are there any other points we haven't discussed? Um. Do you know of any, Tim? Not off the top of my head, not that I can really think of. I'm I'm sure after we're done, we'll get like a thousand different. What about this? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So it always goes. <laughs> yep. Um, I guess we can just open up to questions. Then, does anybody have any questions as far as you know the subject we're talking about? And of course, you know, another thing I want to point out is the word local church is not in the Bible. Yeah. So look out for that. Somebody says you need to find a good New Testament local church. Run along. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. I well, no, see, that's the thing. I mean, you, 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 you can find a good, good local church. It's called Jesus Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen to that.
Yeah, he's local for all of us. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Put question, if you actually have a qu put question in bold so we can see it. Yeah, question and then the your actual question. There, there was someone that did ask a question, though. I uh, just seen – where was it at? Um, our opinion on holidays. Well, I mean, it. I, mean, I guess it depends. I mean, there, there, there's liberty, you know. Uh, Romans 14, 5, to Colossians 2, 16. For the short answer. <laughs> yeah. It's been covered in other studies, you know. I get into a whole big deal on it. Yep. Okay. Question, did Jesus always exist with a physical body prior to creation, or did he exist as God's eternal word that later became flesh like John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.14? Uh, the first point's correct. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it's um, – we. I'll make this quick because we, we covered this the last – if you want to check it out, go check out that, that stream I did with Brian last week. And I have a study on my channel. Go watch it. It's called The Glory of the Lord. It's a long, long study, but very informative. But Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, form points to a shape, a, a physical body, thought not Robert to be equal with God. And it goes on from there. All those physical appearances you see in the, in the Old Testament, that is, they are seeing Jesus Christ. I mean, obviously it wasn't called that yet, but that would, that's God's physical body. Um, that's just the shorthand answer. And, and as far as John 1, 14, that it, it's just talking about the flesh there. That's the corruptible flesh. Compare that. Compare that over over with Romans eight three. Yep. Question: Do you believe in the baptism in Jesus' name? Yeah. Or in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? You're quoting scripture. Yeah, it, they're both interchangeable. That's a point that the Oneness Pentecostals bring up, and because it, well, they, they will say it can only be done in Jesus' name. Well, no. It no, that, first of all, no. First of all, baptism. You know, well, 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 I said this. Water baptism is not salvation. Let's get that clear. But. It doesn't matter, you know, Matthew 28, 19, or if you baptize the name of Jesus, it's, it's saying the same thing because it's, well, it's, it's one being. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Question. What are your thoughts on the preaching of hell not being spoken in the church of in the church buildings, let alone it being too offensive and shouldn't preach it? Yeah, pretty much. So that's what they do. They don't want to preach about hell and anything controversial like that. Yeah. Preach it, that's where going. <laughs> it affects the income. Yeah, it's a it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was anybody pinched during a church service? I was as a child for fidgeting. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's kind of funny actually. I, a little funny story here. My uncle, um, my grandparents were Pentecostal, and uh, my great grandfather was one of the first Pentecostal preachers in Pennsylvania, and he was a nut, abusive, and the whole deal. I was crazy, and um, but anyways, they went to this church service and. My uncle was sitting there and there was an old man in front of him and he was nodding off and kind of going to sleep. And uh, this my uncle was being bad. And so I think they either pinched him or elbowed him, my grandfather, you know. And uh, when he did, he, he jumped and his foot kicked the underside of this old man's chair. <laughs> the old man jumped and, and yelled, <laughs> which, you know, probably triggered a revival for the Pentecostals. Oh, sure. You know, the Holy Spirit was working on him or something. <laughs> Question. Do you think tracting at these megachurch battle buildings is a good idea? You have to pray about that one. We did the one time back as a house church, and uh, they got, they, security came out and stuff. And there was some woman in spike heels and spiky, you know, dyed hair. And she was saying she was going to call the police and stuff. And I said, call them. Go ahead. I said, there's no sign saying we can't put gospel tracks on the vehicles. And she said, what's your name? And I said, you're not going to get my name. And she said, yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> we walked away from her. So, yeah, I don't know. Kind of a waste of time, you know, probably, quite frankly. Um, question, should we keep be keeping biblical Sabbath? Uh, well, if you're a Jew, I think it'd be okay. Um, but the Jews in the New Testament were worshiping on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. So, um, again, the New Testament church is flexible, okay? If I meet somebody walking outside today and they want to get saved and whatever else, and I get to talking to them and they say, I can't, you know, talk right now. How about tomorrow night after I'm done with work? Well, I can't say, well, wait, that's Monday night. No, it has to be either Saturday, the Sabbath or Sunday morning from nine to 12 that I can meet. Go meet with them. Go talk with them. 
if any of these two brothers here are ever in town and they can only be here on a Tuesday morning from 10 till 11, I'm going to go meet with them. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be the biblical Sabbath. Um, yeah, my channel, the off grid thing, just to kind of address that. Yeah, we took it down because there stuff I need to bring out about that whole subject is going to be better done offline. If I can advise people and whatever else might make a eventual, um, you know, offline video or something on that. I'm not sure yet, but I did take it down just after a lot of prayer and discussing with brethren and stuff. So. Question, do Gentiles in the time of Jacob's trouble, trouble have to keep the Sabbath, or is that only for the Jews? I'll let it up to one of you guys. You can answer that. Well, yeah, it's an interesting question because it does say quite clearly that um, let not your flight neither be of the winter or on the Sabbath days. Um, let's see here if I can find that. I think it's Matthew 24, 15. Or some, it's somewhere in that ballpark. Verse 20, so Matthew 24, 20, you're thinking. Yeah. That. Yeah, pray that, uh, let's see here. Pray, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither neither on the Sabbath day. So when the time of Jacob's trouble is happening, yeah, the Jews are trying to keep the Sabbath day. Gentiles, it doesn't really, it doesn't really say specifically Gentile, but I would assume that if they're trying, if the Jews are trying to do it. Whatever Gentiles around would probably be trying to do it too. But I do know that the Sabbath day does come back in the millennium, and Gentiles and Jews are both uh, keeping that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Question Should a Christian participate in the 2020 census? I don't really see a need to. That's, I don't know. What are your thoughts on it, either of you? I am not even aware of the 2020 census. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Question. Is there a biblical way to get married like following the world's marriage laws? Um, the, well, the biblical way to get married is just is to get married, to basically do it, you know, with the knowledge of both sets of parents. You aren't sneaking around and whatever, and, and you're living together publicly as husband and wife. Um, but there are no state marriage licenses in in the you know New Testament or anywhere in the Bible, really. No. Yep. The proper way is a marriage coverture, okay, mm -hmm. you know, to it or a covenant. Some people say covenant. That. Um, <clears throat> it's it's just basically the husband saying, "I'm going to step in and take." Yeah, there you go. Um, I'm going to step in here and take spiritual headship over this young woman here. From the father, I'm going to be now her protector, her provider, and I will, you know, spiritually be there for her uh, as her husband. Um, you don't need to, to go to the state about that and whatever else and get official recognition for your marriage. Yeah. <clears throat> Question How do you find God's will for your life? One of you two guys want to answer that? Go ahead, Tim. Uh, through, through the scriptures and prayer. I mean, it's as simple as that. Read what the scriptures say and, and pray and see where the Lord leads you. Yep. Question for all you guys. Do you, you all have bu scripture bumper stickers magnets? I, I have some, but I don't, I don't have them on there yet. They, some of them have like graven images, so I don't plan on using them. We, we actually got a magnet, um, uh, recently for uh, during the holidays and we were trying to put it on our car, but something's going on with it. We can't figure out how to get to stay. So it's on the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually really disappointed. We was, it's supposed to be for a bumper, but the magnet's not working, right? Cause it's not a sticker. And uh, so we were kind of disappointed in that. So we just, we have it on the fridge. Yep. Question. I heard that Utah is voting to decriminalize polygamy. Should Christians support laws against polygamy? Polygamy is currently illegal in all states. Yeah. You know, polygamy is wrong. <clears throat> in the Old Testament, was it was practiced, but not in the New Testament. It never worked in the Old Testament. Every single one was super contentious. I mean, yeah. look, at, look at Jacob, look at David, look at Solomon. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. Solomon, especially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Question, Brian, did you listen? Did you say, did you say to listen to Lester Ripoff? Because I was listening to one of his video and in the comments, people were talking about his homes, had abuse, etc. cetera. Uh, roll off. <laughs> If you don't know, but yeah, Lester Roloff had some issues and, and whatever else. Um, yeah, you know, I've listened to some of his stuff again, you know, uh, just wade through all that stuff, you know, that you know, there's some good points that he made. Uh, you know, he was a personal buddy of, of Jack Hiles as well, so eh, you know, you'll you'll learn that stuff as you get older as a Christian, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, question, Brother Brian, you just said for the wives to ask their husbands, if my husband doesn't want to do anything with the Bible, am I okay, okay asking brothers questions on here? Yes. If your husband is, is lost, um, then yeah. Um, you go to a man who's older in the Lord and who knows the word and, uh, you know, yeah, ask him questions. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> question if the word became flesh, what was it before it became? Is he had a glorious body? Yeah, I mean, we, we could go, we could just go through all the scriptures, but he had a glorious body. Just mm -hmm. e e every time you see the physical appearance of God in the Old Testament, that's what that's, that's what they're saying. Yep, question is speaking in tongues for today. Um, a church I'm in now leaving speaks tongues in a person. Body movements was really strange. What do you think? Um, well, I've talked about this in other studies and is speaking in tongues for today. Well, what are tongues? Tongues are languages. You're doing it right now. Yes, speaking in languages is for today. <laughs> uh, what the charismatics call speaking in tongues, where they go, it's faith. I think that that's not a language. Okay. Um, they're doing it for money, they're doing it to puff themselves up. It's a scam. Run from it. Yeah, yeah, run for the hills. Yeah. Oh, boy, where are we at here? Getting a lot of questions. Uh, question regarding my last question, is there a way to explain how Christ could have a physical material body prior to the creation of space, time, and matter in Genesis 1-1? Thanks for your answers. Well, again, like I said, it, like I said, I would suggest you seriously go watch the study in the, the glory of the Lord on my channel. Like I said, it's long, but it will cover a lot of what you're saying here. He is the son has always been pre. Well, it, the, the thing is, if I say it's the wrong way, it's going to open up a whole another can of worms because of all the Trinitarian baggage that there is out there. But the, the point is, he his body that he had, or well, he always has. I've said it like that is 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 not even nowhere near near to ours it it does not look like what it, he did not look like what we look like now okay he has a very glorious body that we can't even draw there's that's there, that's why that's why you can't draw god there's no way to properly do it if you uh -huh. if he wants to look like looks like and always is always look like go read Revelation chapter one the only of, of the physical appearance of jesus the only time that changed was was as i read to you earlier in philippians chapter two if you keep reading that context then he talk on he's on corruptible flesh. Question: Should a Christian be willing to die for someone even if even if they are not saved? I guess like when a saved soldier jumps on a grenade for his squad, etc. Well, that depends on the situation. You know, if you have a wife and children to take care of, and there's some shooting in a in a you know shopping mall or something, don't go in and try to stop the guy. You know. Or whatever else you know if, if you have a wife and children to take care of you know that's that's a judgment call mm -hmm. it's going to depend on the situation um uh, question brian if i girlfriend and i live together don't fornicate sleep in separate rooms what's your thought um well you're playing with fire mm -hmm. i I'd have to question whether you're not fornicating sorry i'd have to really question that um, <clears throat> question, do you think the following verses could be used to support Jesus Christ not being the eternal son since he already had a different looking body after his resurrection? Uh, what, what, what verses are you talking about? Yeah, following verses, which I don't, I don't, I don't think, I think you ran out of space to run them, read them. 
Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. He 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 has a he, he put here it is John twenty. John twenty verse fifteen through sixteen. Not being the entire oh, okay. Well, let me look at it real quick. I'm, I try make I try make this quick because I talked about this briefly last time on we're on your stream, Brian. There's a thing in the Trinitarian thing known as, known as eternal sonship versus incarnational. Um, that's a whole big old thing there. Uh, whoa, John twenty verse fifteen. Is it... Well, I, I can just tell you just by looking at, at what, what you're saying here again. The sun has always existed. We'll just make that clear. It just, it, it just, it just, it just, within the Trinitarian thing, uh, what could, because what, what eternal sonship teaches that is that they teach, again, obviously three separate persons there, and that there's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the Son is, it essentially has always been in like subordination to the father because he is a son and he is a father. So there's like, there's that weird subordinates there. And then the incarnation of you is they say he always existed as the word. He was all, he is you know, the capital W word. Then at, the, at what they call the incarnation, then that separate person took upon flesh. And so, and so basically that flesh had to be outright created, which is denying, which is, which is the antichrist doctrine. Long, it can go, long thing there. But the, you know, the point is he, the son has always existed. He's always been the son. It's just, the doctrine of eternal sonship, that's not biblical either. So that's how I answer that. Yeah. Question, what is sin? Well, first and foremost, transgression of the law, you know, as far as just a simple Ten Commandments is a, is a good standard. Mm -hmm. But sin is, is when you're disobeying God. You know, mm -hmm. make it simple. Uh, question, any books you guys recommend, whether biblical or not? Uh, well, in general, you know, um, Paul wrote to Timothy, you know, till I come give attendance to reading. Well, it doesn't necessarily just have to be the Bible that you read. I mean, certainly the King James Bible is God's perfect word. But, you know, all of us have read books that are heretical to try and show the quotes from them to prove the truth from the Bible. So, you know, you can say, well, here's an NIV. Look at this. Let me show you this verse and compare it to the King James Bible. You can. There's really not anything you can't read, you know, obviously pornographic stuff, stay away from that or whatever, or things are going to vex your soul. But I have a lot of heretical books in my collection to show people the truth of the word of God. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, boy. Uh, question. Do you think the spirits coming in will get so bad that Christians will not be able to go to work? Showing simple love by telling coworkers they should quit smoking and you get threatened. Well, that would con contradict the scriptures if you can't go to work. Yeah. And you're a man. Um, so, no, I don't think it's going to get that bad. You know, time of Jacob's trouble. Well, that's a different situation because you have the mark of the beast system and whatever else. So I would say in that time, you know, yeah, things are going to get pretty bad. I hate it how it jumps down like that. Um. Yeah, I think there's one we haven't answered. Question, Brian. In Luke 2, 33, KJV, Joseph and his mother marveled. NIV, his parents marveled. But is the NIV wrong? Because Luke 2, 41 says, KJV says, parents, Joseph as a father figure um, presents Jesus. Um, I'd have to look that. Let me just see here quick. Forty-one. Well, you know, there's there's definite things going on there in context. Um, certainly, you know, Joseph would have served as a parent in terms of like an adoptive parent or whatever else. But you have. Um, uh, you know, Jesus says in verse 49, and he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? It's capital F, whereas verse 48 is a lowercase f. So in, in context there, it's, there's a lot going on there. And the Lord, you know, definitely makes a, a distinction between Joseph being, you know, a parent, so to speak, and God being his actual father. So. That's how I'd answer that. 
<clears throat> Question, when Jesus appeared to the disciples in his glorified body after his resurrection, was Thomas beholding his hands with wounds and poking his side with a scar from the centurion poke? Well, I'm pretty sure John actually, the gospel, I think John, uh, John 20, I think Jesus actually told him to, you know, actually put your finger through him just to do it, just that proof. Question, my mother is Catholic. She doesn't want to talk about the Bible with me. What are your thoughts on continuing to allow her to have a relationship with my family, especially my children? Either you two guys want to comment on that? Oh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I mean, as far as that, as far as that goes, I mean, if you're, you know, when it comes to things like that, eventually, you know, I would I would call this kind of like a judgment call. But if you if you you know love the Lord, it probably will come down to you having a pretty serious issue with your Catholic mother, and it possibly could break the relationship. I mean, typically when you get people like that in your family, things are going to come to a head, and you are going to tell them what the scriptures say, and you are going to it is going to get pretty bad to the point to where they are going to persecute you and then you're just gonna have to cut ties with them i mean i've just seen that with 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 almost every almost every single bible believing brother i've ever come across they get family issues because you we we just can't shut our mouths about the lord neither should we to please our family we we ought to please god rather than men it's as simple as that yep question brian any chance you will discuss the singleness topic for a christian that i mentioned in my testimony letter in future video perhaps or even personal response by letter um, <clears throat> the thing about a man saying, I'd like to just remain single or should it be, but it's better to get married and whatever else. Well, the Bible obviously says if a man is burning, then he should marry. It's better to marry than to burn. First Corinthians chapter seven talks about that. Um, but I'm, I want to kick a, 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 a movement. And I realize in your letter, you weren't going this far, but this M G T O W thing, the men going their own way thing. I am going to be talking about that in a future study and saying that's the extreme, but then there's lesser versions of that where men are saying, I don't want to get married and whatever else and uh, what the Bible has to say about it. So I will be discussing that. Um, <clears throat> question. Why do Trinitarians get so rabid when someone exposes the Trinity? Mm -hmm. I made video, videos exposing the Trinity and Trinity defenders fill the comment section calling me a heretic and a modalist. <laughs> it's it's a different spirit, brother. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just they have a different spirit, you know. And and it's uh, and, and again, you, that's why you can see all throughout the Bible when the when the Hebrews were, you know, again, uh, what's his face, um, Elijah, for a good example, he's in there mocking the priests of Baal and, and those other guys. They're they're all, oh, how dare you, you know, and you know, and it's just it's just it's that spirit within them. <clears throat> yep. Um, I'm going to be discussing this tract right here in a future video. Right there. Mm. Answers in Genesis. <laughs> yep, answers in Genesis. I had a brother from the UK send this to me. Uh -huh. You know, right there. And of course, they quote James White. If I can get that thing on the camera there. Oh, of course they do. See James White, the Forgotten Trinity. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Be an idiot, but um, yeah. conclusion. And here, here's the interesting thing, because this is prophecy right here. The reason Christians believe in the doctrine of the Trinity is that we are forced to come <laughs> to the conclusion by the clear teaching of Scripture. And it goes on. Force. Now, think about this. And I'm going to do a video on this in the future, but, you know, it's all through here. We're forced to. We're forced to. What's the underlying implication there? It's going to be part of the thing of the mark of the beast. Yeah. Trinitarian thing. Yep. It's so funny you bring that because a lot of the books I've been reading, they all say the same thing. They they, they, they use the exact word forced. I've seen that. It's so and, and, future application. The Catholics are going to force people. You know, high level Masons. You have to be a Trinitarian to be a high level Mason. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah. Question, Brian Nellinger. What are your thoughts on on Michael Pearl? Um, I have a major problem with the guy. I think he's a fraud. I think a lot of these guys are frauds and they're going to get, you know, if this work of this council be of men, it will come to naught. And every church building has come to naught. There's yep. no such thing as a church building that's a couple hundred years old. It's still going strong and whatever else. I think we're lagging. They all come to <laughs> And uh, Mark, Michael Pearl, 
Um, I think he's a fake. I think he's a fraud. Um, he's a pervert. I mean, all of the, they they had this pure thing. They they didn't touch each other before marriage, and he never even looked at pornography or whatever else. Then he gets married, and then he writes a sex manual. And I've read I've read read some of his his stuff that he's he's written, and I mean, just foul, very very yeah. foul. Yeah, I, I saw one of his books and like someone was someone was like reviewing one of his like marriage books, whatever. And again, I'm not a parent, but some of the stuff I heard and I was like, it's just it was it was almost I mean, it was literally like approaching abuse. To what what they do how they train their kids. I'm like, that, that makes no sense. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah. Stay away from Michael Pearl. He's he's a fraud. Uh qu question. Interracial marriage is a sin, but if two people of different races get saved after getting married, should they separate? These little these little questions and things, you know. What about this? What about that? <laughs> Try to trap you and whatever else. Well, then you're for divorce and everything else. Um, whatever. I'm not even going to go with that one. I've talked about that in other studies, so I think it, that Ahab thing. I think has asked that question before too. So, question: Do you believe in the current state of Israel as biblical or current on biblical Zionist Jews like Pastor Chuck Baldwin, Liberty Fellowship? Chuck Baldwin is a is a nut. He's a wing nut. Don't listen to him. He's a. It was on Infowars with Alex Jones. He's whatever. He, you know, I heard him say the one time that he has friends that are pre-millennial and all-millennial and post-millennial. I'm not going to divide over it. He's <laughs> that guy. Um, God brought him back in unbelief, just like the Bible said would happen. Okay? Yep. The nation of Israel is a wicked nation. The Jewish people are wicked people. That's the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble. Amen. Okay. Uh. Um, <clears throat> question, seeing government is becoming so corrupt, should Christians be careful about how much they contribute to the sinful system via taxation? If so, can you advise how to do this with God's will? Um, hmm. uh, you know, the Bible does talk about paying taxes and things, paying tribute. So, you know, you, you should, you know, don't get into some of this anti-tax stuff and whatever else I recommend against that. Um, but at the same time, don't just, you know, be stupid about it and just go along with whatever the government tells you to do. I can say that. Some of the stuff, you know, you just, you, you got to figure that stuff out. Yourself. Question. Do you believe the countries that are suffering now is because they went against the country of Israel? Well, there is some of that stuff if they're saying that they don't, they're trying to get them off the land and whatever else. Um, you know, I'd, I'd be careful with, with just simply total allegiance to Israel, I think is a problem um, because they are very wicked. But, you know, there are, you don't want to mess with that. It's God's plan that they're back there in that land. Question, has Acts 20 verses 9 through 12 something to do with the rapture resurrection? Eutychus falls asleep, is taken up dead. Paul saying, trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. Hmm. Never thought of that before. Could be. Yeah, it's a, that's an interesting one. Hmm. I mean, I know, I mean, just that, what you quoted right there, uh, Frederick, trouble not yourselves for his life is in him. I mean, that's obviously talking about his life is he's he's back alive and everything. But um yeah. the whole passage, and there sat in a window a certain young man named um Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long was long preaching, he sunk down with, with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing and embracing him said, trouble not yourselves for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day. So he departed and they brought the young men alive and were not, and were not a little comforted. I don't know if that's really would be a reference to the rapture. That's more or less just a, uh, obviously one of the sign, one of the uh, sign gifts and the, the life returning to him. Just a just a just a resurrection. I wouldn't say I I wouldn't say that's a reference to the rapture or anything.
I guess Brian left. <laughs> I think I think he t- took a second. He's probably probably doing something real quick. Yeah. Yeah, sorry to wanna if, if we missed your question. The the questions come up like so weird on our end. Like if you try to like go read one, they all it, it's hard to explain, but we like we end up passing them up a lot. So so we're not trying to avoid you on purpose. Yeah. I can't click them, but I can still kind of Yeah, I know. That's the problem. He only he, he's a control, put them on the screen. That's why I've been letting him do it, but then it, it always like refreshes and it, it, people's questions get missed. Yeah, because I see a question here. Um, um Evening. I see here a question from uh, Emma Jane. Um, question: Do you think false converts know they're false converts? What are your thoughts on this? And that um, uh, that would be found in Second uh, Timothy three thirteen. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So these are people that are that are deceived. And on top of all that, you know, lost people in general are blind. When you get a false convert is a lost person that thinks they're a Christian. That's what a false convert is. So one, they're already blind spiritually. They haven't actually had their eyes opened or been made alive by the Holy Spirit because there's no Holy Spirit in them. And they're deceived and uh, they're deceiving and they are deceived. So they're a lost person that's deceived and they're deceiving others. Yeah. You know, and, and to your point, I'll add that because I, I just popped in my head. Um, here's a scripture for you again. Uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 10, uh, uh, which says, it would say to the seers, uh, see not and to the prophets prophesy, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the whole one of Israel to cease from before us. So the people that in good instruction righteous, the people is that they're literally saying we want lies, you know, they don't they don't care. Yep. And, and that's and that's what I covered. I was again uh, what's this second Timothy uh four verses two through four or two through four. They will not endorse on doctrine, but that they'll have itching ears. You know, they want to hear it, you know, a lot of these lies. Yeah, and some people too, and like I said, a lot of people the, the people again as we cover, they they know full well they're false. They're deciding again. I actually just met one. Not too long ago, I was telling some of you, Brent, about this. He was a he's a he was a professing atheist, atheist if I can say, it. and then and then he actually converted back to Catholicism of all things. And then we talked to him. He's still an atheist. He's just high down in his rule of religion thing, you know. So and 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 he even told us he actually makes fun of it, Catholicism, but he still goes there. So so people people can know good and well that they're they're false. Yep. Um, question. What does the kingdom of heaven is at hand mean? Matthew 3, 2 and 4, 17. Um, Jesus Christ was there and uh, had they accepted him as their Messiah, um, he would have set up a, you know, kingdom there on the earth. So the kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom. You look at Matthew chapter 11, it talks about that. And it was at hand. It was available. Um, the Daniel Project, a good study documentary. Never heard of it. What's it called? Daniel's Project. I've oh. never heard of that either. Never heard of it either. No. Question. I'm left handed. Is there anything against this like people used to think? I know in Judges it mentions Ehud being one, and somewhere it mentions left handed slingers being super accurate. I, I would say it's probably just a superstition thing. I never really heard. <clears throat> I mean, I've heard some old wives' tale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're left handed, there's something wrong with you. Ooh. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. Do I miss any questions? <clears throat> Question. What is your opinion on women teaching on YouTube? I know first Timothy two, but that's a cultural doctrine. Shame faces means shy and today women go online, etc. but women have the same salvation. Well, firstly, it's not, it's not cultural doctrine. It's a, that's a Bible doctrine. First of all, Mm-hmm. And yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have your own things. I mean, I would say just me. I think, I think like posting like your, um, your your like testimony is fine or something like that, or or just preaching salvation. I think that's fine. Other than after that, is that's just not your role. Because every every you female YouTube channel that I've seen that that are saved or whatever, they always end up in a wreck. You know, I can think of one off the top of my head, but I I won't name the name. Um, yep. Yeah. Question. 
how would you go about homeschooling your child if you don't want them in the public schooling system? Um, same way you go about marriage. Just do yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, well, but Brian, wasn't there a study you had? You you went into all the scriptures actually showing how it, it's the parenting to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's an, yeah. I'm going to say, look that one up, sister. Um, yeah. I, I cannot think of the name, but I, I can, but it, it's, it, it's, what was it? Some about, some about like, I mean, I mean, it's like VBS good for your kids or something like that, or who should be teaching their children? Something like that. Yeah. It's uh, my teaching on Sunday school slash uh, uh, vacation Bible school, I think, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's with our son, you know, we just, we, we've been teaching him things about the Bible and we teach him things will take in places and see that's a bar over there and that's people do this and that, whatever else. It's not, you know, it's kind of like when you start to worship the Lord at home, you don't have to do like the Sunday service thing that went on at church at home. You know, it's the same thing with school. You don't have to do the public school thing, but in the home. <laughs> no. no. I'm, I'm saying because the homeschooling thing for public schooling is just the same thing as doing at home. I mean, it's that doesn't change anything. I mean, it's just my opinion. I mean, I'm not a parent yet. I haven't really thought about it, but I, I guess I'd figure probably, you know, a, a lot of that too would also depend on the child. If it was if it was a girl, then probably you lean toward you know, the, then the mother would teach more motherly things, and if it was a boy, the father would teach more, you know, fatherly things. You know, just naturally. And, and you know, again, it's 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 team effort really. I mean, and that's the thing too, because one thing public school can't teach is is go out and have a, actually experience things, and actually go out and actually learn hands on, and yep. you know. You can't, yeah. you can't do the behind a desk. I mean, our, our son has helped build off grid cabins. I mean, he's, we've had him kayaking. He's one year old. We, we were out kayaking on a lake. I mean, we've taught him so many things that he would have never learned in Sunday school or public school. So that's yeah. not, important. you don't need government permission to do it. What would be oh. your explanation as to why Christ did not know the day or the hour, but said only the father knew if he's, supposed to be one with the father how can christ know not know if he is the father well well again here's the thing it's one of those things where again again as i said well i'll go back to it very quickly flipping again flipping chapter two flipping chapter two covers a lot of what you're, you're asking just in this one little brief little thing because flipping chapter two continues by saying um in, in verse seven be but but made, but made himself of no reputation he wasn't special. All these pictures where he's some handsome guy. I wasn't him. He's of no reputation, nothing. He was extremely poor. I mean, he, he had nowhere to sleep. Uh, and so it took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and being and became a beat unto death, even the death of the cross. And the thing is, the thing is, again, God is omnipresent. He's, he's omnipotent and he's omniscient. Omniscient means he's all-knowing. Well, to be in, 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 as a couple man, you know, in the likeness of a you know, couple man, Therefore, his knowledge would have been limited. But that being said, like, it, 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 that still doesn't overthrow the fact that he still knew full well who he was. You can mm -hmm. see it all throughout the Gospels, especially in John. But but yeah. that, in some cases, he, he did have limited knowledge just because, I mean, he has crept flesh, so he couldn't be able to tell you, you know, what's going on. And free will was there. He was offering himself as the king of the Jews. You know, he that's why the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's there. He's offering it. So... You know, had they accepted, I mean, they had that free will at that time. The Bible is not complete at the time that that was written and things. So you have to keep that stuff in mind. <clears throat> uh, question. This would definitely be used by some Temple Baptist idolaters to teach that church is a building. Uh, am I missing the rest? Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, there it is. There you go. Um, Third John 1.10, would that be them being cast out of the fellowship? cast out of the church it talks about yeah you know just among yeah. the, the body of christ you're you're kicking them out and yeah they they do use that kind of stuff um uh, question is giving your co-worker a gospel track considered witnessing i've also rebuked them for cursing the name of christ but they don't listen to me yeah mm -hmm. uh, Exactly. There are a lot of ways that you can witness out there. Giving gospel tracts out is a good way. Um, just your your life. Excuse me. And uh, you know, Peter's there. You know, while Jesus is on trial, and and he's standing there, warming himself by the fire. And they say, you know, you're one of his disciples. No, I'm not. You know, and they said, thy speech be of thee. You know, you just talk in the way you talk, and everything is a Christian. You're not using profanity, and you're 
you know, just a nice person, whatever you, you're going to give yourself away. Mm -hmm. right? That's the way, way you can witness and, and having a good work ethic. Yep. No hard worker. Do you believe demon possession still exists? Go to any charismatic church. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes. There you go. You see a lot. Of <laughs> yes, I do. Um, question. Are we chosen from God to believe? I, I guess are you talking about like kind of a predestination Calvinism thing? That's, I that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Then um, no, we are not. God does not force us into salvation. It is a free will decision. Yeah. Question. Uh, Gail Ripplinger seems to be a really good teacher for a woman. Are you all familiar with her teachings? Woman or not, her teachings are valid. She's a friend of Hoven, you know. Um, I have mixed emotions about Gail Ripplinger. Um, she was a supporter of my ministry earlier on in terms of selling my video. Um, and but she spoke at Lawson's church, you know, and things. It's kind of you shouldn't really be doing that. Um, she's talking about the Bible version issue. Uh, there's some good things to that, but yeah, I don't know. Well, plus, um, plus, dude, she's she, she's hanging out with Hoven, so that's uh, yeah, that's another issue. She obviously would have known that he switched doctrines on you know, so yeah. Hey, brother, I'll be right back. Okay. Question, Brian, do you agree that self-reliance actually leads to more God reliance and the opposite is government reliance? Are there any verses on this subject? Well, the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. um, when you are self-reliant is kind of a not really an accurate term because you're you're you know, when we are off grid, we're not relying just on ourselves and our strength and whatever else we yeah. rely on the Lord and. You know, it isn't something where if we have a problem, okay, I got to call for help right away. Uh, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? You know, and um, I understand what you're saying that, you know, but the self-reliant thing does tend to lead more to living by faith um, when you're when you're not having everything provided for you and whatever else. I mean, there are people that live in, in you know, complexes and whatever else. And I know some people are forced there because of just, income issues or whatever but and they have their their lawn mowed for them and everything's just done for them and if you have a problem you get somebody to come help you and, and i think it's a much better way to live where you're actually having to take care of your property yourself and rely on the lord and say okay lord what do you want me to do here you know do you want me to build this or do that or whatever else so living by faith is, is what i would say would be the thing there question one more comment how do you how do you view view repentance? In Greek, it means metanoia, which means change your mind. To repent of sin is not trusting in Christ who paid for them. What's your opinion? Do you have any thoughts, brother Tim? Yeah, well, repentance repentance is a repentance is a godly sorrow over your sins. Is is repentance is coming that I mean the whole thing of a change of mind. It's you know again be careful. You got to really be careful with going to Greek to try, try to redefine terms and stuff like that. But repentance is quite simply summed up as a godly sorrow over your sins. It's a point of pure desperation where you finally come to that place where you realize, oh, my gosh, I am no good. I'm just as bad as a murderer. I'm just as bad as any thief that's stolen from a bank. I'm just as bad as this as any any other sinner out there. And therefore, my sins have sentenced me to an eternal hell and I need help. I do not want to go there. I do not want to be this way anymore. My sins in in my in my earthly life are plaguing me. They're destroying me. I need help. I want to be done with this. And that's when that's the brokenness that you need to be at in order to call on the Lord, in order to actually call on the Lord and put your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for your personal sins against God. And once you do all that, you are now uh, predestinated uh, to be in heaven with the Lord forever when you die. And that's what repentance is. Yep. What are your thoughts on Pastor Arnold Murray? Is he correct in his teachings? On his teachings? I've heard the name, but I'm not too familiar with him. I don't know anything about him. Uh, man, there's a bunch of stuff came up. Um, question. Do you think we suffer now due to our four parents, Adam and Eve, in Genesis? Well, 
they, you know, sin came into the world because of what they did. Yep. So, yeah, in a sense we do. Um, question, do you feel age-appropriate fellowship is best for children? If so, how are you going to uh, going about finding other families to fellowship with? Um, that's, that's one that honestly uh, we would be, you know, my wife and I would be fine with our son being around other children and things. That's fine, but we're going to be there. It isn't some kind of a thing of we're just going to let him go. And, oh, you know, go fellowship with those children there and somebody else will look over you. Uh-uh. Um, my son doesn't leave my sight, <clears throat> quite simply. I knew a brother, had a whole bunch of children. He was a Baptist uh, street preacher and um, put his girls in Sunday school. And some bus kids' girls were telling very, very filthy things to his daughters. And they came along and said, you know, we learned this thing in Sunday school. And, and he's just, oh, great. <laughs> I had to explain some pretty foul stuff. So that whole concept is just your children need other children. No, they don't. No, they don't. If you can fellowship with other people, and that's fine. But they don't need other children to develop properly. Show me that in scripture. They need their parents to bring them up. Question, what are your thoughts on Pastor Arnold? Okay, I already did that one. I just looked at all the question things. Sorry. Uh, we kind of already answered that, didn't we? Yeah, it's basically the same question we worded. How real or powerful is the Jesuit order? Very. <laughs> Very. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, all you got to do when you're researching the, the Jesuits, just look up so-and-so passed law, so-and-so is up for political office, and just say, okay, Look at their credentials. Where do they go to school at? Oh, it's a Jesuit school. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It, it's not some kind of a, a magic thing where you got to dig in in secret, whatever. No. Just look. Where are they educated? Donald Trump, Jesuit educated. Yep. That should tell you all you need to know. Yeah. They're going to bow. Me, go ahead. Sorry. I'm just going to say they're going to bow to the will of the Pope. They're going to do what they're told. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. and on that same note, not to go off on. A rabbit trail but i just want to say something because I, I see that a lot just because they go to a jesuit school just mean doesn't mean they're a jesuit okay you gotta realize something the jesuits have stated very clearly that they understand to control people is through the educational system mm -hmm. so when you get someone that goes to a jesuit school you best bet that there is some there is there's definitely jesuit influence and jesuit control over that person yeah, i, I mean I, I hear that thing all the time and it drives me insane it's like they say it very clearly in their own words that they know that they can control people through education so yeah. watch out for someone who comes out of a jesuit university yeah. yeah and you know the whole thing is what was the purpose of the jesuit order to bring everybody back to roman catholicism yep so and so is trained as a jesuit are they pointing people back to catholicism yes then they're fulfilling their jesuit mission yep mm -hmm. it's not rocket science <clears throat> question do you struggle sometimes with being obedient to god yeah i know that in me that is in my flesh well it's no good thing amen yeah all of us do uh -huh. all you know do stupid things and go oh lord i'm sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> every day <laughs> about the coronavirus confirmed it's man-made bioweapon do you have any scripture to discuss this man-made plague um pestilence in the last days mm -hmm. evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived um yeah I'm trying to get to some people i've seen a lot of you're asking a lot of questions here i'm trying to get to people that haven't we haven't responded to yet uh How great do you think the fall of the LGBTQ community will be? I'm not sure what you mean by that, the, the fall of it. Um, I think that they're being set up uh, for eventual slaughter, just like the Muslims. Um, you know, because when you pre-Vatican II Catholics, you know, they're going to have to go out and kill somebody. You know, they go forth, you know, the Antichrist comes con going forth, conquering and to conquer. So I think it's going to become a radical Roman Catholicism in the future. So it's just, you know, the, the whole LGBTQ thing, 
is being used to radicalize the right wingers to get them to want to kill people. And then the Antichrist shows up and says, hey, I'll lead the charge. And then they're ready to do it. Yep. Uh, how many times should one try to preach the gospel to the same person? Um, I would say a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Mm -hmm. He that is such is subverted and sentence being condemned of himself. Okay. I've seen it in my own life. It, 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 when you just keep on doing it, it almost makes it worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen that so many times with, 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 with family and friends. You just keep doing it. They'll start to then they'll now they really don't want to hear it and they just hate your guts. Yep. Yeah. They start to feel almost like a martyr or something like they're being persecuted by you. Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Question. Do you believe in weather weapons, geoengineering in relation to wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, verses in the Bibles and, and verses in the Bible? Yeah. I think there's some of that stuff that goes on. Absolutely. Uh, oh, there's a question. Question, been watching some street preachers to get the courage to speak about God to other people. Anyone have any thoughts on David Lynn, Gabe the Street Preachers, Dory Love? Well, I, I don't know the other two, but I know Gabe the Street Preacher. He he he's a full blown like he is a radical a uh, 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 one is Pentecostal. I mean, he, he teaches yeah. so, I mean, a lot of these guys. I mean, I'm not saying every single street preacher teaches this, but the vast majority of them, they all get into like sense perfection and like very hardcore lordship, you know, lordship salvation, as it be called. And a lot of it, they're, they're just and, and they're purposely just trying to make people angry. And then I'm I'm getting persecuted, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, question, is it normal for a Christian to have a constant fear of God? I know oh, yes. I'm saved since 2017, but I feel like I fear God. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I would say 2 Corinthians 5, 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You know, yep. I'm paraphrasing. I mean, that you, didn't, that's, you have to be fearing God. If you ain't fearing God, then there's a problem with your walk or you're not saved. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm so keen to learn... Uh, what do you think of a man? <laughs> I've heard about him, but what are your views? Okay, we, we, we literally just did a stream about him a week ago. Check, go check it out. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a fraud. I believe the guy's a Jesuit, honestly. Looks like uh, – hey, he, 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 he literally looks like it, uh, Loyola. If you just put the his face next to each other, and he look exactly like yeah. the two. He came out with his video refuting me or whatever else, you know, making fun of me. And, and he laughed about that. <laughs> you know, he just James White feeds off of gullible people. Yeah. Okay. He's a little mind control sophistry tactics of just, you know, coming in and, and you know laughing about things and whatever else and avoiding the question. The guy's just a he's a devil. Yeah, he's he's what the Bible calls a Nicolaitan. Oh yes. He over people with his knowledge and acts and treats them as if they're inferior. Mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, I remember the thing with me. He said, "This guy could never debate a Catholic. He doesn't have no, no, well, <laughs> just preach the gospel to him, you know." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really. All the church fathers by heart, and all the you know council of this and that. Blah blah blah. <laughs> you know, you don't bring that stuff up to a Catholic. But whatever. If sin is transgression of the law and the wages of sin is death, would it be a sin to not keep the Saturday Sabbath since the Pope? Changed it to Sunday. The Pope didn't change it to Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, don't buy into the Seventh Day Adventist lie. I'm sorry, man. You've been lied to. Yeah. And just we can go a lot of scriptures. I'll just since we're right here, I'll quote a quick one. Romans 13, uh, verse uh, verse nine. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely that. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You didn't see the Sabbath day there. And again, Colossians two sixteen, let, let 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 a man judge you, da da da, and 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 judging of the Sabbath days. So, sorry, man, you've been lied to. Yep. Question: How is Donald Trump or Emmanuel Macron, the French president, also Jesuit educated, bringing people to the Roman Catholic Church? Uh, they look it up. <laughs> they meet with the Pope. Okay. Yeah. Al Smith dinner. Look at he, the Al Smith dinner. Watch my video on that. Tr no, Trump, no. Trump has openly made videos saying we want to we want to bring the bank bring the Catholics back. And again, the people in the New Apostolic Reformation I talked about earlier, they openly work with Catholics, no problem. So yeah. it, 
and, and Trump said in his little speech there at the Al Smith dinner, the Catholic Al Smith dinner, he said, we're going to end anti-Catholic bias. Yeah. Yep. How's he making them, you know, bringing them back to Catholicism? Well, open your eyes. <laughs> Sorry there, buddy, but you know, you just gotta look it up. <laughs> just look. Uh, what are your thoughts on the YouTube channel 33rd book, Micah Colston? I, I haven't seen anything I would disagree with on his channel. He's written to me different times. Sent me uh, different books that he's written. Pretty good stuff that he puts out. Yeah, I like it. I, I don't. I can't think of anything I disagree with the guy on. I like his stuff. Yep, he's funny. <laughs> Yeah, he has a good sense of humor. Um, any advice on preaching to UVF Protestants? Who's UVF? I have no idea. <laughs> UVF. Ask me yeah. later that, brother. I, I'm not sure you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, brother Aaron. I've never heard of a UVF before. Hmm. Ultraviolet? <laughs> Ultraviolet. <laughs> <laughs> Ultraviolet frequency. Yeah. <laughs> Opinion on Christian Zionism, doing everything possible to help the Jews build a third temple. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, oh, send us money to the Third Temple Association, whatever. They're going to use it for something else. You know, I mean, the Lord's going to work all that stuff out. I don't give money to a lot of Jewish, you know, stuff over in Israel right now. God brought them back in unbelief. Mm -hmm. So. Lord's going to work that stuff out. Um, whoop, I just was up down there. Um, question. Canada is a constitutional monarchy with queen authority who is under oath to uphold rule of law according to the KJV. Is that maybe why we aren't bad in many cases versus the U.S.? Uh, mm. From what I've seen, Canada is actually pretty bad. Yeah, I was going to say that they, they they they've had the LGBTQ stuff for decades longer than America has. Yeah, I, I don't know what part of Canada you live live uh, live in there, Doug. But uh, I mean, if, if you haven't really kept up with the news, it Canada's pretty bad right now, especially mm -hmm. pushing hardcore LGBT. I mean, they got the. I mean, they. I did a video on it a while back myself. I read an article how they were actually possibly going to take children away from parents who wouldn't agree to their gender identification stuff. I mean, Canada's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I watched Gabe Street preach as someone said he's good. He did a video, KJV versus NIV and against Catholic. He's Pentecostal. Yeah, he is. Just, just, just watch his salvation thing where he explains what salvation is and, and then and also watch his teaching on, on the Godhead. He, 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 he's a modalist. So yeah, he's he he's a very he's a very far, very extreme one as Pentecostal. Yep. Do you believe that the best way to be inclusive is to not care? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of not really sure how to answer that one. That's <laughs> <laughs> almost kinda sounds kind of like a joke. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are your thoughts on Jonathan Kahn book, The Paradigm? Jonathan is a con man. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust him for one second. If he's on the Jim Baker show, I don't trust him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more of that new apostolic kingdom building junk, so. Yeah. Um, been reading Jeremiah, and it seems that trees are able to speak. Is this talking about the wind hitting the leaves? Or do you think they give out some kind of low frequency sound in the, you know, thousand year kingdom? I think it's. You know, uh, I don't know. Well, I, I can answer that actually. For, for actually, brother, that that second thing you there, the, the the second part there, every that's why you see in the scriptures all about all the time about how the trees and the mountains and they're they're singing, because they they all give off a they all give off a a like certain like frequency, and so and 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 I I, I watched the thing on it. it's actually really neat how it works in creation, but it it to God it, it actually is putting off like musical type of stuff. So we can't hear, but God is actually almost hearing some sort of like musical thing, you know. Uh, so it's, it's actually really neat when you look into it. Thoughts on Robert Melitolo? Sounds familiar, but, but no. Yeah. 
Okay, we are about two and a half hours here into this whole thing, so I guess we'll call it quits. Um, so uh, just to just to sum up the whole point of this whole thing is um, you get saved and you're in the church. OK, um, you go to the grocery store, you are in church. OK, you don't act differently because you're not in some stupid building. OK, um, there's no special uniform that you have to put on your Sunday best and whatever else you wear your clothing. You know, that's modest and whatever else, not worldly and satanic and things. <laughs> And you are in church, okay? Uh, you go to bed at night, you are in church. You get in your car and you drive someplace, you are in church. If you can find other Christians to meet with, you meet somebody and they say, hey, I'm a Christian. Okay. <laughs> Do you have fellowship of the spirit with that person? You have to do that. You, you have to say, start talking about things, you know. Um, Testimony right up front. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, how'd you get saved? Are you born again? Tell me about it. You know, and if they say, well, I go to church and I'm this and I'm that. And you say, well, you know, or they say, where do you go to church at? And I say, well, I worship at home. And they go, oh, wow. Well, uh. <laughs> well, you say, uh, well, you know, the, I believe the King James Bible is God's perfect word. And there's nothing in there about going to church. So I'd have to question you, actually. Where do you get your foundation for that? You know, and you start to get that friction. And I just think that it's. It's kind of bad that you don't go to church and whatever else you say okay well you have a good day or or tell me to say something well you're you're not basing your beliefs in scripture so sorry I can't fill with you and you walk away um it's just that simple uh we need to approve people and just you know hey you're not you know i think there's some problems here and uh, so um, you're going to meet church building people and they're going to try to make you feel bad because you don't go someplace or whatever else. Um, they have no uh, scripture for that. So, you know, and I'll say too, just to your one little point of, again, and how we're, we're, we're always in church 100% of the time every day, you know, and and, and that's, that's up. I tip all the time. I, I said, because they asked me, so, so where do you go to church? I, I said, I'm in church 24, seven, 365. I mean, I, and, and, Believe me, and when you start talking to people about that, you know, and you start the thing is, people, I, they will respect you more. I've noticed. I didn't say they'll get saved, you know, or so I just said that they there will be that that respect because if you hold yourself up to that standard, you know, and and hey and hey and hey, you're different. I'm not doing all the same old like religious thing every single week. I'm just I'm just a man who fears God, and I'm trying to trying to serve Him best I can. I've learned people that I've seen, they will respect you a thousand times more because they see these guys just a bunch of hypocrites playing religion. Whereas here, here is an actual guy you know, or sister that's actually staying for truth and, you know, and they're actually serious. Yep. Absolutely. And you are accountable to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Um, remember that. And that's so important to get because again, you play church. Well, you can do your little religious thing when you're with the people that know you. But then you can go out and do whatever you want. I mean, Donnie Romero from the new IFB going to, you know, casinos and, and gambling and doing drugs and, and fornicating with prostitutes as a married man, a pastor of a Baptist church. You know, what was the deal? Well, he was acting. He had two different lives. You see, um, when you understand, hey, I'm in church all the time. I'm in fellowship with the Lord all the time. And you're accountable to God. And you answer to God. And when you see somebody that's saved and they start to get off, well, you have to tell them, you know, confront them in a, in a loving way. But ultimately, they are accountable to God. OK, and if they don't listen, if they don't listen to you, well, then you break fellowship with them. But they're in God's hands at that point in time. You don't form some kind of church council and declare them as heretics and burn them at the stake or something. You know, it's we're all accountable to God. And, you know, you, you have to remember that again, church building people use that thing. Who are you accountable to God? Mm -hmm. So, and keep in mind the dispensational time frame that we are in here. We are in the falling away. We are in a time when people will not endure sound doctrine and whatever else. So most of us live very disconnected from physical fellowship with other believers. 
because you meet people and they and you know I can't tell you how many times I've you know bumper stickers on my vehicle and somebody comes up and they say oh, I like your bumper stickers I'm a Christian too and I say oh really oh well praise the Lord what you know tell me about your testimony and I and you know within two three minutes I'm thinking they're not saved mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and the conversation goes on they're getting mad at me and you know the whole thing it's the way it has to be you know and, and then well, what I'd like to invite you to our church. Maybe you could get straightened out, you know, on some of these weird beliefs of yours. And no, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. You know, don't compromise and go to some church building someplace. They're not in scripture, first of all, but you compromise and well, they okay, they use the new versions and, and you know, but some of the messages are good and and the, the social thing is really nice too. It's nice to have other Christians to talk to. Wrong wrong you're you're going against the scriptures when you do that um if you can find a group of, of people to fellowship with in your area great praise the lord if you can't then you keep it in mind that you are in church all the time and you're to be in fellowship with the lord the bible says pray without ceasing okay um stay by his word so i guess that'll be it you two guys have anything you'd want to say in closing you go ahead Tim just that um and just that the, the whole thing because I know uh, just just to keep in mind too that just because you're just because you're part of a local fellowship that's not a church building doesn't mean that that church building church building mentality still can't be there in the local fellowship that's not in a church building you can still have the that militant Baptist push to be in the local church without the church building and to watch out for that, to watch out to people, to watch out for people that talk like that. Because when they start talking like that and everything, they are going completely against scripture. And again, as, as I said before, do not let anyone ever, ever tell you that you are not right with God or in disobedience just because you're not in a local fellowship constantly. Maybe the Lord has you alone for a reason. Maybe he has you trying to, he's trying to keep you alone to help sanctify you more and also have you do some personal work for the Lord, you know? That's that's there as well. Mm -hmm. so just don't let everyone anyone ever try to make you feel that way. That's yep. right. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll close it there and uh, see everybody. I guess next time we do this or whatever else, but uh, just just keep that in mind. Um, you're accountable to God. You're in church all the time. If you're saved. Um, you meet somebody who professes to be a Christian, you have to try the spirit there. Don't just believe them. And uh, so that is going to be it. And uh, we'll see everybody in the future. And uh, stand by the word of God, King James Bible. Amen. Amen.